All right, everyone. So before we get started with our projects, first let's set up a environment, a environment which we all take part of. And I would recommend that we all have the same environment. Now, in my case, I am going to use Visual Studio Code and I am recommending that you also do so. But if you are using something else, that by all means, the main focus of this course is for you to know React and to learn React by creating better and better projects. Okay, so for the code editor, I'm going to use Visual Studio Code. I'm going to leave a link in the next section for you to download Visual Studio Code if you don't have it. Also for NPM, I'm going to use NPM and Node.js. So I'm not going to use Yarn. I'm also going to leave a link in the... The next lecture is actually a resource lecture where you're going to get all of your resources that we are going to use here. After you have Visual Studio, so if you don't have it installed, then please follow the link in the next lecture and come back to this because I am going to take you for a couple of steps. We are going to, after you have Visual Studio Code installed and it's up and running, then please create a folder wherever you wish to create it and call it Project Sandbox or call it wherever you wish, but please create only one folder in, not on your desktop <laughs> if possible, but create it somewhere else in a secured location so you don't lose it. Okay, now on the left side, if you click on our Explorer, you can see I'm already in a folder so I cannot create another one or I cannot open another one. But very really quick, I want, you to, I want to show you one simple extension and this is going to be ES7 and this is the code snippet. So I want you to install both of them. First one being ES7 React Redux styled component snippets. This is going to install all of the snippets for React. I'm actually going to use a couple of them. Also the hook snippets are excellent. And then please also install ES7 React Redux React native snippets. Okay, so if you have, and also GraphQL, this is also important. Now, if you have all of them installed, then we can go back and create our React application. So first things first, let me make something very clear. We are not going to create the React app for each and every project. I'm going to simplify everything by creating the React app only once. So let me close this up. Let's open up the terminal, control tilde, and please be sure that you are in your folder. My folder is called curriculum. And within here, I'm going to mpx create dash react dash app space and dot because I want to create the React application within this folder. So let's, so let's mpx create dash react dash app space and I could go with dot, but just that we have the same procedure, I'm going to type in the name of the project is going to be project dash send box. Okay, now let's hit enter and the, the installation will take just a couple of moments. Now I'm going to use these moments to inform you that if you want to learn the basics of React, I'm also creating a, a complete course for complete beginners where I'm going to take you from HTML, CSS and React. So this course should be also out in just a couple of weeks after releasing this one. But in the meantime, you can check out my free React crash course, which is on YouTube. I'm going to leave the link in the resource folders. So what is the idea here? Why am I creating a sandbox? Because of the projects will be created in this sandbox. Basically, we're going to install React app within here, but we're going to use a separate folder where we're going to store each and every project. Meaning, when we're creating a project, we're going to create it in our source folder, and we're going to always refer or link up the app component to that folder. So let's get rid of everything that is in here. I'm not going to go through the details of what each and every folder means, please check out the crash course for this or just check out the, the main course for learning React. I'm assuming that you either take my crash course before this because that's really helpful for understanding the basics, but I'm also assuming that you know the basics. This is why, this is why I'm going to move a bit faster. So let's delete this, don't need the logo. I'm going to leave here, let's just leave here an H1. Oh, and by the way, you see this is app.js and no annotation is taking effect here. This is happening to you, then just go down here where, it's, where it says JavaScript, click on it, and then type in ja, uh, actually React and enter. Now Emmet should work. So if I create a div or a h1, you'll see Emmet working. Okay, so this will be project. Let's hit save. Let's see. We don't need the test. We don't need the index. You don't need in the CSS. A logo, report, setups, just delete those. Let's go into our 
uh, index.js, we're going to delete from here index CSS, the report, we're going to delete this, hit save, and I think we're good to go. I'm also going to delete everything that is in the app, and we're going to paste in here our, our CSS, which is going to come from the file that is uh, supplied to you in the resource folder. Okay, so just copy in the entire CSS. And now we could just get started by typing in npm and start. And this should start our application. Wait, we need to cd into project, sandbox, and here npm start. Sorry about that. Okay, and this should start your React server. Just start in a different, in uh, Google Chrome in my case. So I'm going to make this smaller. I'm going to have the app to the right side. Okay, we have it there, project working, perfect. As you can see in your CSS, there are a couple of fonts inserted here. You can obviously change them if you don't like them. We're going to go with Roboto for the entire projects and we're going to reset margins, paddings, the same thing. Now, these classes right here are my classes and I'm using these classes because I don't want to use Bootstrap, don't want to use any kind of framework, Tailwind CSS that could change over time because then I would have to come back to the course and change a couple of things. So you're going to learn React here, and this is why I'm going to use my <laughs> own uh, created CSS, which I actually, this this actually I created when I created my advanced CSS and SAS course. And as you can see here, a lot of classes are, um, are similar to Bootstrap or Tailwind CSS or so forth and so on. So we're going to use classes, and we're also going to use uh, style components, inline style, and we're going to use everything in um, in our project. So you go, you're going to have, you at the end of this course, you are going to master any type of CSS within React. Also style components, okay, because we are going to install them. So you're in your source, as you can see, you just, you should have only these three files, your app, your index, your app, and your app.css file. Now let's create a new folder called projects, and we're going to end the video here. So project, hit enter, and this is where we're going to create our very first project. Okay, so see you in the very first project. Welcome to the very first project. In this project, we're going to create a simple signature application, which is going to record your name and the date, or the date and your name, depending on in which order you're writing them in. Now in this project, we're going to use use state, which is a React hook. We're also going to create our first component, we're going to do some inline styles and well, that's basically it. We're also going to check out how we can create styles using variables and how we can use functions in JSX. So hope you're excited. Let me also show you how the project works. It's a pretty simple project, but it's that's also the, the idea here. We're going to start simple and again, we're going to go into more complex projects. So let's choose a date from down here, say today, 19 of November, and we can type in here name, let's say Norbert, and hit enter, and there we go. There's a name if you want to change something here, and type in Laura, it's going to change it up. Okay, this is also capital letters, we could also change it up to lowercase, or the first letter to be uppercase, and then everything else to be lowercase, and there's your date right here. So, simple application, but a lot to learn. Let's get started with this project. Okay, so let's get started with the project. For this, we're going to go into projects, and within here, we're going to create a new folder. And please, consider keeping my naming convention. So 01-e-signature and dash app. Okay, within here, let's create a file and let's call it e-signature and we're going to call it, we're going to use now capital letters. So e-signature and app dot js and x. Okay, I'm going to use here a self-exporting function RFC. I'm going to use the export up here, export default function and signature functions, and we're not going to use class-based uh, components, we're going to use function-based components. Let me delete this here, we're actually going to export here a div with a class of container, so class name, container, and I'm going to also use text, the center, a style. Let's go right in here, and we're going to create our very first component, so let's create a, fol a folder outside of the projects. You know what, let's create it in the project. So projects, new folder, and we're going to call this components, and all of our components will live in here. And I'm missing here an N, components, there we go. So let's create the very first component. We're going to create here a title component, title.jsx, rfce, or just rfc, 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 and there we go. So the title component, 
The title component will consist of an h1. Let's replace this div with an h1. Let's give it the class name of title. And let's also add here text center. Let's hit enter. Let's import this component so we can already see what is happening here. So importing the component. And let me first of all hit save. Let's import the component here. Also, if you just type in title, the component, because it's already in here, should be recognized if you have all of your snippets. Close it up, hit save, and you should see the title component right here. There's nothing in here yet, just the title. And we also didn't import our project into our application. So app, 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 there's our, there's our app. Instead of this project, we, that we're going to import our very first project. So our first project is the e-signature application. You can always see it's recognized here. And it's also imported and automatically up there. You just close it up and now you should see title because this is what we have in here in the component and also in our application. So remember the strategy here is to not to install React 1000 million times, but each and every application that we're going to create is going to be imported here. And this is the, going to be the application. So the next application, just going to comment this out and then I'm going to comment in the next application or import in the next application. Okay, let's move back to our signature application. We got here our title, the component, we imported it up here from components. Now we're going to go back to component because this is not done. We still need to add a couple of things. Let's say the title will not be title, but it's going to be something else. So the idea here is that I'm going to create a condition. So if there is a title passed in here, a variable, let's just say if there is no text, text passed in here, then use the text of title. If there is something passed in here, then use that text. And we're going to pass this in as a prop up here as text, okay? So if we pass in something into our title, for example, in our case is going to be text and this will be name, then instead of title, we're going to have name. You can already see this appearing here. But if we wouldn't have anything in there, then it's going to be title. We're not done with the title component. I also want to add here a couple of conditions for the class or actually just one condition. So let instead of having this in here, let's wrap this into curly brackets. And let's say if there is a class passed in here or there are multiple classes or if there are no classes passed in here, classes, then just display the title, text center, and so forth and so on. But if there is something passed in here, then we are going to use those classes. So classes, classes, and what am I doing wrong here? I have too much S's here. And also let's pass it up here. You can pass it before the title even, or before the text. So classes and comma, and, and there we go. So if I would pass in here class, let's say I'm going to change this. Let's use classes prop. And let's say I'm going to choose here to pass in a, instead of a title, let's say this is going to be a subtitle. So subtitle, which is basically a class that I do have in our CSS. Let's see, you can search here, dot subtitle. And there we go. It's going to have a font size of 2.5 RAM, font weight of 400, so forth and so on. But the title is much larger, should be up here, 3.75, okay? So if you're passing in some kind of class, there is anything else, then the title, then that will be, uh, that will replace the title class. Okay, so we have our title and actually I'm going to copy this one more time because the second one was going to be date. We're going to have a name and a date, exactly as we have here. You could also change this or leave it as main title and this will be bolded out, but you know what? I'm going to change this down here to main title and I'm going to leave this as title, so like that. Okay, next I'm going to pass a paragraph tag under this title, paragraph, and you can add here lorem, let's say lorem 300, that's too much. Let's, let's just leave a lorem ifs and as it is. And let's pass in here a margin button of four. It's going to give us a bit more space here. And now for the text, so for the date, we have here a date and a, a signature status. Bo both of them are input tags. Let's pass them in here. Okay, so input, and the type of the input is going to be date, the very first one. Because we're going to pass in a number or a date here. And then we're going to have a value. Now the value that we're going to pass in here, I'm just going to leave it as an empty string for now. And I'm going to copy this. Now, you know what? Let me, let me add a style to this. So there are two ways of adding styles. As you know, in CSS, we can add here our own style, type something in, or we could use a variable. Now, this is what I'm actually going to do here. Above the return, I'm going to create a const. And let's say this is going to be input 
style. Now I'm going to assign this to an object. I'm going to use border and let's set this to none. And I'm going to start passing this automatically in here. So instead of two curly brackets, I'm going to pass in the variable, which is going to take out the borders from this. Now you know what? I'm going to copy this one more time, change this to text. We're going to also have our signature on the right side. Let's go back up to our input style. And after border, I'm going to pass in a couple of things. Let's say a border to the bottom now, border. And remember when you're typing in styles, exactly as in inline styles in React, you need to use camel case, border and camel case, so not dash, but border, camel case, bottom. And I'm going to give this a border to the bottom. And now we need to add between quotation mark two pixels and dotted. And there we go. Okay, next up, let's also take out the outline. So when I'm focusing in here, don't want to have that outline. So outline column and string of none. Close it with a comma. And the last thing I want to add to this is a padding. I'm going to add a padding of 0.35 RAM. And this is going to be top and bottom. And we're going to add zero to left and right. Okay, now one last thing, if you want to change the background color, for example, of the entire document, you can select from here the document and it's going to be automatically styled and document body dot style. And let's go with the background. And I'm going to change the background to let's say hash E E E it's going to be a grayed out background. Okay, you can see how easy we just styled the background color by grabbing onto the DOM element. It's not the shadow DOM, but the DOM element. So these two input tags, they should be way down here. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to wrap them into a footer tag. You can also use just a regular div, but because they're all almost in a footer, I'm going to use a footer tag. So I'm going to select uh, these two fellows. So you and you, hold on shift, select them both, hold on option or alt on a PC and arrow up that they should be moved up now. Okay, I'm going to use here a couple of classes now. So class name dflex this is going to display it as flex. And now let's just lose use an inline style. So style and let's pass in here. So you can also see some inline styles. Let's pass in here a justify and content. And we're going to justify the content here with space around the elements. Now let's also display them relative. So position comma position dash string of relative. And now we can position them somewhere. I'm going to position them from the top with let's say 60 viewport heights. Okay, and they're going to be pushed down, you know, uh, that's too much. 40 viewport heights, that's much better. Okay, so right now, if I would type something in our input tag, you will see it's not working because I add a empty value to it. Also, the date will not work because I just added empty values to it. If I would delete, uh, let's delete it from the text, the empty value, it's safe, Try type something in here, then it's going to work. But why am I adding here value? Because I want to use this value. So let's hit save again and put our value back. And now it's time to use use state. Okay, now in order to use state, we need to import it up here from React. So let's go, let's go up here. You can also do React, comma, use state. And there we go. We just imported use state. Now in order to use state, we need to go down here, assign it to a variable. So let's use const. And we're going to destructure here two values, actually one value and one function that is going to set that value. Let's first of all, take care of the naming part. So name, and we're going to use a function which is going to set the name. So set name, and we're going to assign this to use state. Okay. And we can also assign state or leave this empty, which basically means nothing. We can also assign an empty string. Now we're going to use this state in our values. So instead of this empty string, we're going to add in here the state of name. Now, if you start typing in something in here, nothing happens because when you're trying to type something into an input tag, you're trying to change something. This means that you need to have a change event listener. So let's just use here on change. And when we are changing something in this input tag, then something should happen. And the something should be handled by a function. And usually we call these functions handlers. So let's call this handle name change. Okay, now we need to create this function because the function is not in here, I'm just going to use the function in here. It's always screaming, screaming at me, hey, where's my function? Well, your function will be up here. And I'm also going to use here const the name of the function, and then I'm going to assign it, assign it to a error function. Now I'm also going to pass in here the event because this needs to listen to whatever happens in there. 
So what event are we listening to? We're listening to a unchange event. So let me just hit save for now and let's open up the console. Right click, inspect, open up the console. Well, this is not what I wanted. So console, I'm going to move you down here and voila, empty console. So let's say that when I'm changing something in there, I'm going to console log it and I'm going to console log the e dot target dot value. So let's see what happens if you start typing something in here. You can see it's going to start outputting the value here. So we don't we don't want to output it in um, in our console, but we want to output it up here. Instead of the name, we want to output whatever we type in here. First, this means that we need to replace the name here with this value, with the name value from here. Now you could either pass it in here. So if we just pass it in as, let me make a copy of this, copy it, comment it out, take this name variable from the state. So the state is currently empty because the state is empty. It's going to pass in here an empty state. That means it's going to recognize there's nothing in here and it's going to display title, just as we did in our component. If nothing is passed in here, then display title. If I would pass something in here, let's say Norbert, Norbert, what am I doing? Norbert, and sorry about the S, and hit save, we will see Norbert, because now the state is Norbert, and it's passed down here, and this recognizes there is something in there. But what we actually want is to pass in whatever we type in here. And also you can see down here in the signature, it's already Norbert. That's not what we want. We want to change the state. In order to change the state, we need our set name function which is going to change this state so let me comment out its console log we're going to use the set name function and we're going to pass in here the e dot target dot value what is that value <laughs> there we go that we are passing in here so instead of uh, let me save and let me also delete norbert we're going to have a title and we're going to pass in here norbert and you can already see is it is passed in um now let's pass in here sign and you can see it's now sign down here and if we type in Norbert it's going to change and on a refresh it's also going to change back more week and let's all but I actually want to pass in here your signature lowercase s so you just saw how easily we can change this to Norbert by using use state and we're going to do the same thing for the date so I'm going to create another state I'm going to call this date I'm going to call this set date and I'm going to leave this empty. And now instead of date, uh, let me go down here. Instead of date, we are going to pass down here date. Date and it's going to take the date. Well, it's empty. But this is actually in our case really not what we want. We want to not have here title, but um, we could either type in here something. So let's say uh, select date, save it. You will have your select date here. Or you could do something else. You can go down here and say if there is no date, then please display the OB, which is just short for date of birth. And oops, it should be a question mark. But the, if there is a date, then display that date. So instead of having the state passed in here, just give you another example, then you're going to have the OB so as a default value. Now let's actually pass in a date and let's actually make this input tag do something. So the value will be instead of an empty string, the date that's going to be passed in. And we're going to again listen to the change, so on change. But this time we need a different handle, a different handler, and we're going to call this handle handle change, and not name, but handle date change. Now let's create a function. We're going to go underneath this function, copy, you could just copy and paste this function, copy, paste it down here handle date and again we're going to do the same thing we're going to select target e dot value dot target basically this means we're going to change the date down here I also don't need the console anymore select the date we're going to pass past in up here and assign with Norbert BM and that's it that's our very first project okay so hope you enjoyed the project and see you in the next one welcome to the color randomizer application in this application you will learn how to use or create a couple of buttons also how to use the math functionality in React and how to hook up buttons with callback functions that when triggered will randomize different colors. Also randomize the background color and randomize the title and let's just try out the application. Let's say I'm going to click the very first button. Now if I click it, take a look at the background, take a look at the title, take a look at the button. So first click, second click, third click 
and so forth and so on. You can see all the buttons are randomly changing their color. The background is changing the color. Now, if I start clicking the next button, this button is now start to randomly change its color and also the background again, the next button and the next button. So pretty simple application, but I think you are going to learn a lot. So let's get started with the project. So let's get started with the project. Now, first things first, we need to deactivate our previous project by commenting out this and commenting out the import. So let's go back to an application. If we save, we'll see nothing. Next step is to actually create the project folder. So once again, let's go into our projects, create another folder 02, 02 dash randomize colors, colors, hit enter, and then create the application itself. So randomize and colors. Remember camel case, everything and JSX. Okay, RFC, give a short, start with the shortcut. And also first things first, we need to save and import it within here. So let's go one step down, open, randomize colors. There it is, close it up, hit save, and it should work. So need to zoom in a bit. Let's see, I'm at 200%, holy moly. Okay, let's go back to our randomized colors. Now again, I'm going to return a container, so a class, class name of container. And let's move down here. Let's, just, let's delete this randomized colors and move it into a title component. So component, title, capital T, title. So for some reason, this time it was not recognized, but no problem, we can import our components. So import title from, you know what, they need to go one level up, components, and from here we're going to choose the title component. Title, we need to have you as a text, so text, and paste this in as a string, randomize color. So let's make a space between them. Next, let's move underneath of it. Uh, and also let's, let's, Let's insert here another class or so class name or classes and let's add here a MB and margin to the bottom of four. And now because I changed the, the, the class on it, you know what? Let's move back to our component. I want to change something here. So if the pam pam pam, uh, I still want this title to be in here. So I could do something like pass it in the title and also pass it in here, class and the string of title. Okay, I want this title to, to remain there nevertheless. Also, if you pass in a subtitle, then this should change. Okay, let's move back to our component. So let's say we added the margin to the bottom of four, but I think now the text center is gone. So let's also add back. Why am I even... Stack center should still remain. So I'm going to take it out from here, pass it back in here and just leave it at title. Okay. So we got a title set up. Next up, let's create a, but a button. So just a regular button tag. And this button tag should have the handle of click me, not free, click me. Okay. Now buttons have a couple of classes. If you take a look now in my CSS and you can first of all choose a BTN. This will give you a regular button and then let's go with the btn the btn dash danger and this will give you a red button okay let's copy this button a couple of times let's copy it four times because i want to show you a couple of things so the second one let's change it to success then let's change the next one to primary and let's also do a warning button warning there we go so we got our button set up let's see are there well they're not centered because uh, let's also do here margin auto and text center. Okay. So everything is now centered. So how do we handle our events? You know, regularly, if you take your HTML button, you would add an event list. You'd, you would take this button from the DOM, add an event listener to it. And in our case, we just need to type in a click. So on click and let's do something. Let's handle click. So the first one will handle the click. Now it's looking for this function. We're going to create this function, so function and handle click. I'm going to pass it in as just a regular console log. So console log and usually console log click. Okay, let's hit save. Let's check out the console, inspect, go to the console and let's move up here. And why are you looking for values? We don't need you. Okay, okay, let's do here a refresh. So if I'm going to click one of the buttons, nothing happens. But if I'm going to click the very first button, then I should get this console log click. So each time I'm clicking on the button, this function will be executed. Now, what did I pass in the button as such? So handle click and why didn't uh, the function and why didn't I pass it in as a, 
as an execution like this, basically adding, let me just come this up, basically adding the parentheses. Well, because just let's hit the refresh and just take a look down in the console, you see it just automatically executed and cannot execute it any longer. So in order to pass in a function, we need to pass it in as such as its name. Now let's say I want to grab onto the event from this button, then I could do something like this, I'm going to create here a callback function, anonymous one, and this is going to trigger the button. Now, if I want to pass in the event, so if I now try to, to click it, not working anymore, now I need to call the function here, as you can see, if I refresh the page, it's not no longer executing, only when I'm clicking it. So why is this helpful? Well, because I can now pass in the event. So if I'm passing down the event, I need to catch it here, for example, for example, here, if E or event, it's easier for you to understand this way. So event, and if I'm clicking now the button, this still works. And also if I want to, let's copy this console log, comment it out and console log the event dot target, or let's just console log the event. It should give me a execution of click event. So if I console log it now, it's undefined because I also need to catch it here, event. Now if I'm clicking it, you can see it's synthetic base event on click and so far and so on. So it's basically telling me that this was a click event. Okay, so I'm passing down the event, the execution here, passing it out to the function and grabbing it in here. And we can now do something like target and click on it again. It's going to give me the very first button. So you get the idea. Now, actually we're doing something else in, in um, React. We are using arrow functions up here. So you can do something like this, const, we're going to do exactly the same thing as we did up there. So handle, click, and we're going to assign it, not click, click. And now we can assign it to a anonymous function up here, passing the E event in here, and then do something. So you can just remove, actually, you know what? I'm going to change, I'm going to go to the next button. So just to show that it's the same thing. On click, you will handle sec, click, and I'm going to remain, rename my function up here in sec click and I'm going to console log now this event target and whoop this way. So the first one if I'm clicking it, let's see, let me just clear the console. So the first one if I'm clicking it to get the first button, the second button should be now this button. Okay, you can see it's doing exactly the same thing. But this is a more much shorter way. So grab on, create the function up here as an error function as using a const use an anonymous function up here, grab onto the event. So whenever this function is called on whatever element, because if I'm doing it this way, I have to pass in this to each and every one of them. So this is the much shorter way. So let me pass on this function, the second one. Let me pass it in both of them. I just hold down option, click through two things that I want to add a function to, and it added the function to both of the places. I'm going to leave in this one. This is just an example for you, Flayton, to to work with it. Now let's actually work in this and also in that function. I'm going to create another function. I'm going to create a function that is going to change the body color, not the body color, but it's going to generate a random color. So let's create here a function, get random color. And you obviously saw this function multiple times in JavaScript. Let's create a, a variable called letters. I'm going to pass in here in a string uh, zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and then A, B, C, D, E, F. Oh, C, D, E, F, because all of the hexadecimal colors uh, start with a number or can start with anything, but they're basically from zero to nine and A, B, C, D, E, F. Okay, and then let's create another variable called color or hex or whatever you want to name it. I'm going to pass in here the string of hexadecimal and now we're going to compile, compile them or combine them using a for loop. So for let where i is this, <laughs> it's so rare that I use a regular for loop. So where i is less than six, because I don't want to have a number that is more than six, it can be less than six, but not greater than six, as you know, hexadecimal numbers. Then we're going to iterate i and let's return a color and let's add to this color plus equal the letters. So the first variable letters, we're going to add to this hexadecimal, a random iteration of this string. Now we're going to use 
math floor for this math the math method and floor and we're going to loop over our bum, 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 math method again and use the random method on it and we're going to multiply this 16 okay and this entire function should just return the color variable and that's it so if i'm going to execute this function then i should get a hexadecimal color so let me pass this function in here on this handle click call let's take a look down here in the console so if i press the very first one nothing will happen but if i and also let me comment out this I'm just going to comment um console log the event there which is the button but if i pass the second one then it should generate a random number but i should have also passed it in to a console so console dot log the execution of that function so let's click again and there we go we have a string of a hexadecimal number of six digits perfect now what can we do with this random color well we need to pass it in as a background color and as a color to the buttons so what i'm going to do here is first of all grab onto the bodies and grab onto the body tag using regular javascript so document Pre selector and we're going to grab onto the body tag okay and now let's add to the body tag the style and background of the function of get random color and that's it so if i will click now and also kind of close up the console if i'm going to click now that the second button then the background color should get a random color and boom there we go you can see simple as that okay now let's grab onto the buttons now you see we have here a event and we know that we can grab onto the target by clicking on so let's use that and we're going to grab onto the e.target. So whatever button we're going to click on, we're going to grab onto the style of it. So dot style. And we're going to change this background color. We're going to assign it to the get random color function. So basically, we're going to click on the very first button. It's going to not only generate a random color from the background, but also change the background color of the button that was clicked. Okay. And simple as that. Now, I wanted to. I just wanted to illustrate within this project how event handling works in React. So hope you enjoyed this project. Hope you understood how this works. And this is why I didn't create any kind of button component. We're going to create the button component just in a couple of minutes or in the next project. And also how we can use functions. So hope you learned a lot. So in this project, we're going to learn how to use clicks and double clicks and also how to integrate icons and be more specifically, we're going to integrate uh, not font awesome icons, but react icons and react has access to a multitude of libraries like font awesome bootstrap and also other companies you will see just in a couple of seconds. Now we're going to install react icons and we're also going to use state in order to, for example, like something Then this heart will appear also this counter one like up there. And we can also double click on this little puppy and we will like or dislike the photo. Okay, so that's kind of the project. Hope you're excited. So let's just get started with the project. So let's get started by creating our folder for the project. Let's go in our projects, new folder, B03. It's going to be called like my photo. Okay, let's go in here, create a new file. Let's call this like photo app, photo and app jsx hit enter rfc by the way you could also do rfce if you want to export it down here whatever you prefer so i'm going to go with rfc export the app let's also import it and really quick before we do that you can see i un uncommented this and this will also happen to you so uncomment that import your like like photo app it's going to import it up there let's comment this back in and you will see that the background doesn't change now you need to do adjust a small refresh and then everything is going to be pushed out of the browser's memory okay so let's go back to our application and let's get started coding so first things first let's create a container again i'm going to have just one div with a class of containers class name container instead of that we have to go down here let's import a title component so title why is this recognizing the title nevertheless let's just import this import title from title up one level components components forward slash title there we go so i'm going to use the title i'm going to use the text as this cut it out paste it in here between quotations so we're going to have our text let's also 
leave some spaces here. Next up, let's create the H2, which is going to host this uh, this like button and this like counter here. So a H2. Actually, you know what? We got to use another title component. So let's just copy this, paste it down here. Let's change classes to main title. Actually, subtitle. What am I doing here? So subtitle. And let's quickly go back to the components. Let's go components. And this should be a or, not a and. It's either one or the other. Okay. And again, I'm going to center everything, text and center. Now for the text, I'm going to have here count or likes. Uh, likes. So just like that. And we're going to put our likes in here. But for now, let's just have the text. Now let's create a little dog there. And this dog is going to actually live in a card. The poor dog is going to live in a card. But nevertheless, let's create a div. I know I'm just going to use classes. So I'm going to use my card classes or so card, card. Uh, let's go with the card dark. You could also do another color and a margin auto. And whatever will live in this card will have then a dark border. So if you hit save, you're just going to see this margin appearing. No worries. We can also decrease the, the size. This is a bit too large. Let's just do here inline style of width and let's just go with 300. So if you're only typing in numbers, this will also work. You don't have to necessarily type in pixels. And also let's do a cursor pointer because I want to hover over it. Cursor and the string of pointer. And in this video, we're just going to style our card. And that's it. Now let's go into the card itself. And let's do a card header. So class card header. And I'm also going to increase the FX. So the font size. This is just my font sizes to XL. Okay, there's the header. There's nothing in there yet. But we are going to place something in there. Let's just say pa, 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 a small tag with doggy dog. Doggy, not dodgy. Also do a dodgy dog. Doggy dog. Okay, so there's a doggy dog. As a header let's move outside the header and now within here i'm going to insert an image this image is going to be empty for now so let's just type in as alternative img there's the image holder and i also want the image later on to have a style to fit content so we could just do a style and a height of fit content basically it's going to fit whatever the content or whatever the the body in here will have as a width fit content and there we go Okay, so the last thing that we need is down here the footer where we're going to have this comment and uh, the heart as a like. So we're going to go underneath our, we're going to go underneath our image. I'm going to create another div. We're going to have the class of card footer. So let's type in card and footer, and also let's increase the font size of fs dash xl again a large font size, and we're going to display everything as flex. So d flex is going to flex everything in a row direction and it's also at the style of space between because i want to have a complete space between the left side so basically this icon and this icon so let's type in here justify justify content and it's going to be space between okay so let's go back to our project actually so that's the card for now we need to next up integrate icons so let's install react icons smiley face this and this to our card here and the way we do this is first of all we're going to install as a dependency react icons now just do a google search or actually you have everything in your resource folder so you have the link to this if not then just do a google search for react icons and you should land on this page now this is where you will find all of the icons in order to have the icons first needs to install them so basically we're going to go ahead down in the terminal open up a, another terminal please take care to be in your in your project folder so you need to cd and into project sandbox and from here just do a npm install react dash icons okay just hit enter and this should install react icons now also if you take a look in your package.json you will see react icons v4 6 and so forth and so on if you're on a later you're watching this later on and this has changed then just compare to the latest version that you see up here Okay, next up, let's use our icons. Now, the title. So let's go up here where we're importing. And in order to use an icon, you need to import it. Now, the very first icon that we're going to use will be the smiley face. 
Now, if you type in your search back to React icons and just type in smile, you will see a multitude of smiley faces appear. No matter which one you choose, I'm going to show you how you can uh, actually use them. So for example, if I choose the very first one, this one right here, click on it, you will see it's going to be copied to clipboard. I can go in here. The way you import them is using curly brackets, paste this in, and now you need to import it from React icons. Okay, but that's not, that's not all. You also need to specify this right here. The very first two letters is actually the library. This is coming from uh, AI. I don't know what this is. Let me these are always the abbreviations or the shirts form the short 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 term for uh i think it's flat color icons fi i don't know exactly but you will also need to type in the abbreviations so of forward slash and you type in ai and we'll already see it there okay so it's going to come from there now you can use this icon by just copying you this is basically a component so you just so you can just use it as one so the smiley face will be in the header. Let's go to our header here and let's insert the icon. Let's go to a header here. Let's go down. And as I said, exactly as a component, so open and close it up. And you should see the icon appearing right here. Now you can also add classes to this. So let's say M uh, margin to the right side. So that's margin end and two RAM. And this should wait margin start margin end two. Um, because small tags are, for example, if I use here div, so the, so the right size MR and 2. This is a bit different than what you will see in Bootstrap. This, bootstrap, this would be margin end. It's not work because for me, logically, it is margin to the right side, not the end. Okay, so we just added a bit of margin to the doggy dog and the between the doggy dog and the smiley face, actually to the smiley face. So you can see classes, you can also add them here. Next, let's add those two icons down in the footer. And for this, we need to import the following icons. So let's just go up here. If they are in the same library, you can import them here. If you're importing something from a different library, they need to do another import. So we're going to stick with this. We're going to see in, in uh, other projects that I'm going to import multiple libraries. So let's import the next one, AI, fill and heart, and then AI out line heart and let me just do these two first of all so we're going to insert this heart right here as you sign up finish project if i click on it it's going to be red and also filled if i click on it again it's going to be outlined and well empty so this is why i'm importing two icons and i'm going to use both of them let me also close up the left side i want you to have more real estate here to work with now those two icons are going to be placed in the footer so let's go on down in the footer tag you know what, let me insert also the, the outline, that outline comment. So comma, AI, outline, and comment. There we go. So the first things first, we're going to use our comment here. We're going to go in our footer and use the comment tag. Close it up and there should be the comment. Okay, the next one will be our heart. And for this, I'm going to paste it, paste it in to a condition. So the condition will be, if this is liked, so if the if the if the action exists of like, then open and close parenthesis, show me your AI fill heart. And also going to add to this a class name of text dash danger. It's going to give us then a red color. But if not, then I'm going to have I also need to close this up. That the default icon that we're going to see is a AI outline heart. Okay? And close this up. Let's also add to this and that's it. Okay, now it's asking me for this like. What, what is this like? Well, it's it's an action that we need to take. So let me just demonstrate it up here. Let's just create a let it like. It exists now. It's undefined, but it exists. Now, is it is it doing anything? No, because it just exists, but it's undefined. So if I would set this to true, so some kind of Boolean, then we'll see this turning into red. If I set this to false, then it will turn to a outline heart. Now we are going to change this. I'm going to also show you how, but for now, let's just add the image and then we're done with this part. So the way we use images in React, first of all, you need to download the image and add it here as an image. Let's create another folder, uh, IMG. I'm just going to add the image. You can add another image if you want. It, this really doesn't matter. Let's add the image here 
and now we can we have access to the image. So next up, I'm going to import the image. So import. I'm just going to use IMG or let's use doggy dog. Doggy, and we're going to import it from here and image and then dog dot jpeg. Now remember, you need to also type in the extension jpeg. And it's not an I, but it's a J. Okay, we have a doggy dog. We have a doggy dog. Let's copy this. And the way you use images is you go into the source from the image. Instead of those quotations, you type in curly brackets and add this as a variable. And there we go. There's a dog. And there should be a D. What am I doing? D and D. Okay. So there's a dog image. Now all we need to do is somehow make this guy likable. <laughs> so if we click on a heart, one click here should they should turn right uh, red. Also, if you double click the image, it should turn it should change the heart and also change your counter. So, so in order to change this from false to true, we need some kind of action. And most preferably, we should have a click as an event listener. And then, well, we are in React, so we can add this to a state. So first things first, let me actually uh, drop this down here, make this larger and make this smaller. We want you to see the code more. Okay. First things first, we need to import use state. We have here React. We can also import it up here. Curly brackets, use state. So we have access to use state now. And let's create here within the function. We're returning it. First of all, const. And we're going to call the first one like the, the state, just as I did up here. And then we need something to set it. So set like when we are changing this. And we're going to use state here and set it default to false. Just that I set it up here. Now this should give an error. I'm going to comment this out, and now it should work again. So if I would set this to true in the state, so just take a look at the heart down there. So true, then it's going to turn red. So let's set this back to false. And now we need some kind of action if I'm clicking on this to turn red. So let's create here a const and toggle like. Now I'm going to set this to an error function. Just I showed you in the previous. And now I'm going to check if like does not exist, then I'm going to set like to true. Else I'm going to set like to false. Okay, now let's take this toggle like and add it to our heart down here. So for the first state is our heart is in a outline, oh, there it is, outline heart. Okay, so this is the state that is in because it's set to false. So I'm going to add an event listener to this on click. I'm going to set the toggle button to it. So basically, if I'm clicking now on this, it's going to turn red. But if I'm clicking it, clicking the heart again, it's not turning back because now it has changed to this icon. So let's also add the event listener of on click with the toggler on our red heart. And now if I click on the left, right, right heart, it's going to toggle our heart to the next icon. Let's also inspect this. I didn't use the components. And let's go down to components. So let's let's look at icon icon fill heart and let's see it has the function of toggle like on it as a prop if i go on the icon itself you can see that text is class danger okay and you could also see the state here let me just make this a bit smaller or actually larger uh this one don't need the component list you can see the state here changing so false and true okay so now let's close this up and let's take care of our likes up here for this, I'm just going to create another const, a, a, another use state. And I'm going to call this count. And this one will be set count. Again, we're going to use use state. And what is this going to do? Well, each time we like it, it should add a like a number here. Now, because our state is at, at its beginning at zero, we're going to pass in here zero. Then we're going to use our count instead of likes down here. I'm going to change the quotation marks to template literals. So I'm going to use backticks. Then I'm going to pass this in as a variable and like likes count. Okay, and this is now zero. If I would change this to one, it's going to change to one and back to zero. Now we don't want to change it here. We want to change it on a like. So the like is currently setting this to true. And we can also use the set count here to set our count plus one. Basically, if we're liking something, then we're going to have one like. Now, if we're disliking it, then it should remove this. And for this, we're just going to copy this, add it down here, and I'm going to change this to a minus sign. So if I'm 
liking it. Well, let's go back to, let's just refresh it because in the state, because the state just added another one to it. So we have zero likes. If I like it, you're going to have one like. If I dislike it, it's going to have zero like. Now, obviously you can change this up to have multiple likes, just add to it. But uh, this is not part of this project. So we're just going to leave it at the, as it is. Also, what I wanted to add here is a shadow to the container. So shadow and MD. Okay, so it's a bit, eh, that's too much. Let's do it. SM. Shadow SM. And there we go. Just a bit of a shadow to the card. Okay, so that's pretty much it for the project. Hope you enjoyed it. Let's just take a look at this again. Like the dog. Oh, double click. We forgot to double click. Okay, so we have our likes. You can like it here, but I also want to click the image and be able to like it. So double click it. So for this, I'm going to add a event listener to the card itself. You can go to the div of card and add here a on double click and just use the same function that we did up here, toggle like. So if I pass this in here, oh, not on the footer, sorry about that, but on the card up here. So now if I click the card, it's going to like and dislike my photo, but you need to double click it. Okay. And actually you could also add it to the image only. It's only if you click the image, where's the image? There's the image. Only then the like will be toggled. Okay. So that's it for the project. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope you like this little doggy dog. And especially, I hope you learned a lot. In this project, you're going to learn how to create this small little testimonial application. And it's pretty important because now we're going to get into use effect, a next react hook, which is going to allow us to get API requests or fetch requests from a mock server. We're going to use the JSON placeholder server this is right here. And we're going to fetch some data from it. So what are we going to fetch? We're going to fetch some posts. We're going to post them in a card. We're going to fetch some users with their email addresses. And we're also going to fetch comments from those users, depending on their ID, what they said, and what their email address are. So pretty exciting project. We're also going to create a couple of new components. It's going to be the button component which is going to allow us to insert text in the component, insert icons in the component, and also have its own click event on each of them. Obviously, we're also going to use state in order to change the state of our component. So hope you're excited and let's get started with the project. Okay, let's get started with our testimonial application. For this, as always, we're going to create our, com our container, our folder for the application. This is going to be the number four, so zero four. And let's just type in here, testimonial dash app. Actually, testimonials, multiples. I'm just going to copy this testimonials, enter and create a new file. And you're going to use here capital case because this is going to be a component and also app with capital case. So let's end it with a dot JSX and RFC. And we're good to go with our with testimonials, testimonials. And also here, well, I just messed it up all over the place. So test testimonials and also up here. Okay. Now let's add it to the app, to the app.js down here, testimonials, close it up. We should get here our testimonials. If it is, uh, wait a second. Yeah. Compiled successful. And let's hit save here. Okay. So there we go. There's our application. Next up. So let's give this a class of container. I'll say margin auto and we're good to go. Next let's insert here title. So title component, also import it, import title from title. I'm going to go up components dash title. Let's use the text as the testimonials app. Okay. Testimonials and application and you should be a string. Okay. Next up, we're going to create our second component, which is going to be a button component. So let's go to our components folder right here. Create a new file. Let's call it button dot jsx it's rfc and instead of the divs we're going to return here a button now we're also going to return a couple of classes for the class name i'm first of all going to use here curly brackets and then backticks because i want each and every button that is going to be created to have the class of btn for the text we're going to insert here a text and let's also bring in here text Okay, and now like, let's just bring in this component. So we're going to bring in, just going to copy the title and replace this with button. So button, and down here, I can now insert my button. So component, button, close it up, and let's let's just leave it at, as it is. 
And now we should pass in here a kind of a default text. So if there is no text, then display, well, let's just say click. But there, if there is a text, then display that text. So we're going to have it like this and we can see we have here click. Okay, next up, I want to be able to change the class of the button. So what I'm going to do here, add here variable, dollar sign, I'm going to call this btn class. Now we're going to use this as a prop up here. And this just means that if I go back here and instead of the class, oh, let's also add the text. So text, let's say the very first one will be posts. Okay, so I just change it to post and let's also add a class. So class, the btn class, and I'm going to add here btn info. So the button retains is btn, its main class, but also adds to it btn info class. We could also have btn sm, that's going to make a small button or LG, I'm going to make a large button. So I'm going to leave it as a regular button and that's it. Okay, let's go back to the component because we're not done yet. We also want to be able to add some kind of icon in a, in a button. So right before the text here, I'm going to add another variable of icon or another prop and also pass it up here. It doesn't matter which order you pass them in, icon, but down here it does matter because this is where the icon will appear if you have an icon. So if I would give this button an icon and for this let's just insert some kind of icon. We already have React icons installed. If not, npm install dash React icons. And for the posts, let's just bring in a icon. You know, so disable this. And this time I'm going to bring in an icon from BS. So import. And the name of the icon will be BS fill file and post fill. Post and fill. And this is going to come from React icons and BS because it started with BS. Okay, so let's just add this icon. Now the way you add icons, for example, here, I'm going to use the prop of icon. And the way you add icons, well, it's exactly as you would add a normal icon. So open, close and close up this. And there we go. There's our icon. Okay. One last thing about the button. If you want to keep this shorter, you can add here a default text. So let's just add here a click and delete this. Okay. It's the same thing. As you can see, if I copy this button and remove the text from here, it's just going to say, Oh, add it to the class. No, not the class, but, and there we go, click. Okay, but I want to change the icon from here. So I'm going to copy this icon, the import, I mean, I'm going to replace it with FA user and alt. And this is going to come from FA, so FA, and also copy this and replace it in here. I'm going to have here a user. Okay, the last icon, let's also add this one. I'm going to copy the button and add here, be a comment to detail. This is going to come from BI and also edit down here and there we go we have three buttons oh we forgot to add the text so text will be for this one users and for let me just copy this for the last button is going to be comments comments and there we go so we have our three buttons if you wish to add a bit more space between them then you can just go into the icon and add a class name of margin right let's say one instead of add a bit of a margin to it. But I'm going to leave this up to you. Okay, the last thing I want to add to the buttons is a click event. Basically, if I click on one of the buttons, then something should happen. Now let's open up the console. The console, there's a console. Let's also delete everything that is in there. We might have some errors from previous things. And now let's add here a, well, right after the class name, a on click. And we're going to pass it this. I'm going to pass it on as on and click. I'm going to add it up here as a prop. So on click. Okay. So if you're using this on click, then it's going to be passed in as a prop into the button. And here it should do something. So for example, if I would create a function, a const handle click, and let's just pass in here, console log my click. Well, you should be an error function. What are you doing, buddy? Okay. So we can already pass this handle click a button. Let's pass it here at the end. So on click, just handle this on click. Remember, this is a component. It's not actually a button. This component returns a button and we're passing down this function into that button. Okay. So if I click, if I will click the very first button, then it's going to handle my click and I can do this to all of my buttons. So paste this in here and paste it in here to the very last one. So let's just change, uh, ah, let's leave it at this. So click, 
click and clicks. Okay, so yeah, we're done with this part. Now let's move on to using some effects and also use state. Okay, now we got our buttons done. Let me just close up the console and let's get started by, by adding here a subtitle. So the subtitle, copy the title, title component. We're going to add it down here and instead of text, uh, let's type in here, select from above. And after the title, let's add here, let's actually add to this a class. So we're going to say that the class says, we're going to add multiple classes, it's going to be subtitle. So within a string, subtitle, there we go. This makes it smaller. And then we could also add a color to the subtitle. We're going to add a text of primary. Okay. Now, why do we want to select from above? Because if I would click one of these buttons, it should either display posts, users, or comments. And this will be displayed from this, uh, this mock server. Now this is the JSON server. And from here you can get mock data, as you can see here. We're going to use this as a fetch request and we're going to use this fetch request within a use state, actually within a use effect. But first let me get, let me get use state. So above here, comma, and we're going to use use if use state and also comma use effect. Now I'm also going to delete or actually just comment out this and let's get started by assigning here const and we're going to assign this to testimonials, testimonials and then comma set testimonials. Okay, and we're going to assign this to use state. Okay, so our testimonials will be displayed down here after the title. So first, let me just go here. Yeah, we're missing handle, click, handle, click. I know, I'm going to just select this everywhere. So select the first con command D and D and let's delete it for now. Okay, this is going to yell at me, but let's just add actually empty string. Yeah, let's just add an empty string. So it doesn't yell at us anymore because it's missing that um, that function that we created. Okay, so instead of the title here, some select from above, I actually want to display the testimonial that are selected. So either it's a post, a user, or comments. Now we are going to pass in here, instead of the text, we're going to pass in a question first. So, so if testimonials exist, then, so if they don't exist, then display select from above. But if they do exist, then display the testimonials. So pretty simple. Now, where are these testimonials coming from? They're going to come from another state. Basically, when we're going to set a testimonial, so post, user, or comment, it's going to appear here. So we're going to use your set testimonials, we're going to go down here into each of the buttons. And let's just say that if I click on this button, then, oops. So if I click on, on posts, then I'm going to pass in here a arrow function. And this arrow function will set testimonials to the string of posts, okay? The next one, so basically if I click on posts, it's going to change this to posts. So I know that I just clicked on posts. The next one, which is going to be users, are going to be changed to users. And the very last one, obviously, is going to be changed to comments. So copy, paste it in here, and comments. Okay, so if I click through here, we're going to see users, comments, posts, so forth and so on. If there's nothing selected, then it prompts me to select something. Now, next step is to get some data. And for this, we're going to use use effect. So let's use here use effect. And use effect has a callback function, a anonymous function, which is going to call whatever is passed in here and set it at the beginning of the application. So as soon as the application loads, it's going to do this. So for this, we're going to go to the JSON server and as always, you're going to have all of the links in the resource portion of the course. So just copy this, paste it in here. And instead of to do's right after the forward slash, we're going to pass in here. You know, so this should be in, so not a string. We're going to replace the string with template literals. And we're going to pass in here the variable of testimonials or the state of testimonials. Now remember when we're clicking through the state. So when we're clicking through these buttons, we are resetting the state to either comment, post, user, and so forth and so on. And this means that also within here, after the forward slash, it's going to be instead of posts or as instead of to do's, as you saw there, as you saw here, instead of to do's, we're going to have users or posts or comments. Now the response is going to come in, it's going to be turned into JSON data. And then we're not going to console log that JSON data, but we're going to create a, another 
variable. We're going to create another state. So let me just copy this and replace this testimonials with items. And there should be a capital I. Now we're fetching some kind of data. So we're fetching these items and we're going to set those items down here as JSON data. And each time our testimonials change, then the data, so on each press of this, of this button, the data will refresh, will change this, and this function will run again. So as soon as testimonials changes, this function will run again. But because at the beginning it's set to nothing, well, it's not going to dispose, uh, display anything. Okay, so where should we display something? Well, we're going to go down after our title, in our case, subtitle, and we're going to display here. Well, if there are any items, because we're setting them up there to items, then do nothing. But if there are any kind of items, then we're going to take those items and we're going to loop over them using a map method. Now, a map returns a new array. So we're going to take each item from that array. We're going to pass it through another callback function. And within here, we're going to re implicitly return now. So what should we return? Well, we're going to return a card. So let's start out by creating a div with a class of card, card, and you can change this if you want, card uh, primary. Wait, why isn't Emmet working? Uh, so I'm returning here, that's closing up there and that's closing up here. That's so strange. Div, extremely strange. Nevertheless, let's return a div, class name of card and card primary. And also let's add a margin to the bottom of two. So we're going to close this up here and then close up the div tag. And something is wrong. So I'm returning that item map item and in here should be the item that i'm returning so what is your problem bob uh okay i'm outside this closing here oh yeah and you should be here okay so as you can see returning items for each of those posts now there are a lot of posts so we're returning items if i return comments then again i'm returning items and so forth and so on now from those items we can select different things. If you take a look in our this uh, server, for example, in posts, if you click on post, you'll see you have a user ID, you have an ID, you have a title, you have a body. So basically we can select each one of them. If I want to select item.id, then I'm going to get their IDs. Oh, wait just a second, they should be in curly brackets. So I'm going to get one, two, three, four, five, and so forth and so on. I want to get title, uh, then I'm going to get, get their title, these are just Lorem Ipsum titles. And if I go to posts or users, there's nothing comments, there's nothing but only posts. So basically we're returning from this data. If we're in case of, if we're clicking on user, then we're returning users. And if we go to users, so let me just click here on back. Well, forward back. If you go to users, so instead of posts, we're passing in users. You can get the user ID, you can get a username. So let's try a name, name. And if I'm on post and I'm going to get nothing. But if I go to users, I'm going to get some kind of generated names. Okay, so let's create here some kind of nice looking data. And one last thing when you return when you use a map method, you should always assign a key. So in our case to this main div, which is a card, I'm also going to add the key property. And for the key, I'm going to set the item dot ID. Okay, so it needs some kind of key. Now I'm going to use this item.name, as you can see here, in case of a name, in case of a post, we don't have any kind of name. So if there is no name, I also don't want to display anything. So basically we're going to say here, if there is a name, then return a h2. I'm just going to do it this way. Then return an h2 with the class name of card-header. And in here, I'm going to have the item.name, okay? so. In posts, we're not going to get anything, but in users, we're going to get this. In comments, we're going to get this because they also do, someone did comment it. Next, after the name, let's add a class of card dash body. It's also going to be a div. And within here, we're going to get h. Uh, let's add a h4 with an item.title. Then let's copy this. Let's change it to a paragraph tag set of item.body, which is going to be the, the post itself. This, this. so if you're on post, you're going to get this and this. If you're on um, users, you're going to get, to get the user name. And let's also add their email addresses just for fun. So if the item, you know what, I'm going to copy this. It's almost the same thing. So if there is an item, and I'm going to replace this with 
email then i'm going to return that item email but i'm going to return it in a small tag and this small tag would have the class of card footer instead of header okay as you can see each card will have now in their footer the email address now if you click through them you're going to see your posts your users and your comments and the comments going to also have the text in the middle okay so that's pretty much it for this project hope you enjoyed it and hope you learned a lot let's click through it you just see how use effect works basically it loads when the, the application loads so if i would really load because it's set to to absolutely nothing i also need to set it to an empty string so because it's set to nothing it's not going to show let's just re reload it again because it's set to nothing it's not going to show any kind of data down here we have this question if there isn't any data then just do nothing but if there is some data then loop through that data return each item of that array or object actually it's an object and then within some basic styling return from that item a id as a key name if there is a name title body email and so on and so on and i would suggest that you play or play around with this json mock data is json placeholder if you search for json placeholder you will end up there on this page but as I said it's also in the Christian in resources okay so that's pretty much it for the project thank you very much and hope you learned a lot all right in this project you're going to learn one of the most useful components i consider is alerts so you're going to learn how to create alerts so basically alert components so let me just hit a refresh here there are three alerts one of them will display after delay this can be approximately five seconds is it disappearing uh you can also click on alerts and they will completely disappear and you can also make them all disappear and also with a delay so we're going to have different situations with different color alerts so the first alert as you can see is a danger alert and you have a sex successful alert or you will have an information alert which will disappear after the delay the delay you can set for yourself basically you can set it for five seconds one second three seconds the three second one i believe is the best so 2.5 three seconds somewhere there is the best time for someone to a quick read alert and then the alert disappears also you will be able to click on it and it's going to disappear we're going to use use state use uh, use effect also and yeah let's get started with the project so let's create a new folder for our alerts so this will be basically uh number five so project number five we're going to call this alerts and let's create within here new file alert app.jsx rfc whoa rf wait what did i do wrong rfc there we go again this is just going to be a container so class name and container and that's it now within here we're going to bring in our alert so let me first bring this uh, alert app into app.js let's go down here open alert and they should bring an alert up there let's close it up and we should now have our alert obviously there's nothing in there uh, let's do in alert let's hit save so just that we have something in there okay so we have our alert let's also add margin auto to this margin auto let me just quickly check something in our css so m auto uh margin auto but i like to have margin auto let me copy this on the x axis only so mx and this will be anyway uh auto on the x-axis and zero left and right so if i go here margin x auto that's much better okay next up we're going to create a alert component in our components so components alert the capital a alert jsx rfc alert and let's also bring it in here as uh, let's just go down a bit of indentation and let's bring in alert from components alert close it up and instead of having here alert i'm going to pass it in here as alert okay there we go we have our alert component next in our component i'm going to bring in use state so within curly brackets use state and use effect so state will change and update the state and effect would load on um, on the start of the of the application okay first things first let's grab onto our alert let's go before the return and let's create a const const show alert and set show alert okay i'm going to set this to use state now the state will be set to true because i want to be able to activate or deactivate this later on using 
our set show alert. Now in the return bracket, we're going to return, first of all, this is going to be within parentheses, we're going to return show alert. And there is an, if there is no, if there is a show alert, then we're going to return a div. So basically open and close div. We're going to have a class name of, and these are actually the classes that are in your CSS. So it's going to have a class of alert, the main class. And I'm going to set this within tactics. Let's also close up that so we have more space. So alert will be the main class. Then we're going to have alert and then dash and whatever will be passed in here as a variable, basically the type, which is going to be passed up here as a prop. So I'm just going to copy this and set, send it up here as a prop. So we can always see that we have the alert. Now it just needs to have some kind of style. And the first, let's type in here, alert and type, and let's say success. And there should be actually quotation. So this is going to be a type of success alert. It's saving and the C is going to be red, uh, green. <laughs> I'm not colorblind, relax. Okay, next up. Within the div, we're going to pass in the option to close the alert. So I'm going to create another div. So actually go with a class of so class of alert dash close. And within here, we're going to have two things. First of all, we're going to have the message and then we're going to have a closing button. So for the message, I'm going to use a span tag, span with a class of margin right one. And I'm going to pass in here the message as a prop. So message and up here, we can pass it then in message and whatever we set, well, message and whatever we set the message to will be then shown. So message, let's say for example, uh, let's have a successful login. Okay, this is the message. And now we need a closing button. So let's go back to our alert component. And after the span tag, I'm going to use, actually I'm going to bring in the button component. So button, hey, what are you doing? Button, and let's also bring in the button component. So import button, and we're going to import it from dot and forward slash and button because we are already in components, don't forget that. Okay, so there's our button, just a second. But this button is not going to be a click, it's going to be a, let's change this class, and we're going to set, not the, yeah, no, class, btn class, btn, and we're going to set this to btn dash, btn dash close. Okay, now we just saw that disappear, and instead of the text, we're going to type in a, simple X for the text. And then on click, we're going to set this to close alert because we want to be able, when we're clicking this button, you can see already if I hover, it's going to be red. This is because of the BTN close class. And we're going to set this to close alert. Now the close alert will be a function that we're going to create up here. So let's go up here and say const and close alert. We're going to set this to a callback function and e dot target dot parent element and dot parent ele element again because we want to go out of this button and select uh, the entire thing. So I'm going to copy the parent element, set it here again, and then class list. And we're going to select from the class list to add the class of fade alert. Now this will only add the class to it. So I'm going to show you what it's going to do. It's going to do that fade animation, but it's not going to remove it. So what we need to do now is we're going to use a set timeout function and after a specific time, let's say after three seconds or 0.3 seconds, we're also going to show alert or set show alert. We're going to set this to false. And you know what's going to happen when this is set to false, it's going to change the state of the alert. So let's try this. If I click on this, it's going to make my alert disappear. And you know what? I could also increase this to so five. Uh, boom. There we go. Let me just quickly check at which speed the fade alert class is set. So I'm going to go into my CSS fade alert and it's set to 0.5. So this is why I'm going to leave it at five or even four, because if I would come back here, hit refresh, close the alert again, it's going to have the same animation speed. Okay. So that's it for this part. Now, next up, let's make it so the alert will close automatically after a specific time. Okay, now it's time to add a delay effect to our alert. And with that, I mean that after the delay appeared or it was triggered, it should have a automatic timer that will make it disappear. 
Now for this we will use use effect. So let's use our use effect hook and let's pass in here some sort of conditioning. First I would like to set some kind of trigger. For example, if an alert is set to automatically disappear after a specific time, then we should be able to access this throughout props. So let's set here a delay as a prop. We're going to pass it in here actually. So right up here in our alert, we'll pass in delay as a prop and we're going to automatically set this to false. So if a delay exists, then and only then, we're going to trigger a set timeout function again, which will now change our state to set show alert. And we're going to set this to false. Okay. And we also need a timer here. So let's say 4,000 seconds or let's just say 5,000. This will be five seconds. Nah, let, let's make it a bit quicker. Three seconds. Okay. So basically I'm going to create here another alert, another component. And this time let's say this is going to be a info and coming soon, coming soon. And let's say this is time triggered. And let's now set the delay to true. So delay, we're going to set this to the Boolean of true, basically enabling the delay for this. So our alert already appeared and it also disappeared after three seconds. Now, if I would increase this to five seconds and let's refresh here, our delay will take five seconds and after that disappear. Okay. But we could also set it to, or we could also close it up from here and basically it's gone. It's, it no longer needs to disappear. Now we can do the same thing. We can still close this one and then close this one or just close one of them and wait for the other one to disappear after five seconds. And as you can see, five, sec five seconds is just too long. If you want to also have access to this timer, let's say uh, I'm going to pass in here, then time or delay time, whatever you want to call it, delay, let's call it delay time. And we're going to set this to uh, 3000 and I'm going to pass it down here as delay time. So basically we're going to have three seconds and they should disappear. And if I want to change this, then I just need to pass in delay time and going to increase this to or decrease it to one second. So it's going to appear and one second and disappear. Okay. And boom, it's gone. So this is how easily we can create alerts as, and as you will see later on in future projects, delays are extremely powerful components. You just pop one of them in and they just work. Okay, so hope you enjoyed this project. All right, everyone. In this project, we're going to create a smaller temperature monitor, actually a temperature controller, and we can increase and decrease the temperature using these two plus and minus buttons. Now, when we're going to do this, for example, using the plus button, we're going to increase the temperature. This also means we're going to go into positive temperatures. This also means that we're going to change the background color of this display. So if you're increasing by one click, then it's going to turn red and then it's going to just add one degree to each click that you're adding. Now let's decrease this. And also when it's going to go back to zero, then it's going to turn blue and so far and so on. It's going to decrease to whichever temperature you wish. Now, if you want to change this to Fahrenheit, you feel free to do so. I'm going to leave it as at Celsius. Okay, so hope you're excited. Small little project, but pretty cool. We're going to use use state. And we're also going to update the state. So I think we're ready to get started with the project. Okay, so let's get started by creating a new folder within your projects. I'm going to call this 06 dash temperature dash calc uh, dash controller. Okay, let's close this up. Let's create here a file. Again, we're going to call it the same way as we call the folder. This will be temperature, but now with capital T. Temperature and controller dot and also app app and dot jsx okay rfc we're going to leave the div i seem to be missing here on l and here on l and also let's change all of them so they should have an l and you should have an extra l okay within our div we're going to create a class name i'm going to assign this to container and also let's add a bit of margin here and there so let me go into our file it's going to have a margin to the top of one, two three let's add a three and it's also less text center. Now, if you wish, you can add the title. I'm not going to do this right now. I'm going to leave it open and I'm going to start off by creating a card within here. So card dot BG light, BG dash light, I'm going to have a, a light background, a bluish light background, and then a margin auto. Now within here, let's add an H1 is going to hold the temperature. 
let's hit save and i forgot to include it within our app so temperature controller and close it up and it should automatically import if it doesn't do this for you then you need to import it okay let's go back to our temperature let's also close this up we don't need it so here's the temperature here's our h1 and going back to the card i still want to add something i want to limit this let's see style i'm going to limit this to a width of just 200. now going back to our h1 i'm going to add to this a class name i'm just going to add here a text of light you know what i'm also going to place this in a card i know it sounds dumb it's a card within a card but just bear with me you're going to see why i'm doing this just in a couple of seconds now i'm going to also add a bit of styling because i don't want the general style of the card to take place i want to change it and let's say the height of 150 a width of 150 is basically it's going to be square and a border radius or you know what i'm going to add the border radius here so border dash 50 and just going to add here a border of two pixels so this should be then in quotations two pixels solid and hash 666 okay there we go now our text is white but we're going to change this just in a couple of seconds now underneath our h1 we're going to need two buttons but i want to display them as left and right from one another because buttons are block elements so we're going to use a class of display flex and we're going to add a margin to on the y axis of two but in here we're going to create our two buttons and i'm also going to import the button component now so button and still not importing this is so strange sometimes okay there should be a component and i'm going to import up here import button from dash dash forward slash components and forward slash button Okay, so we got a button component. Now we can pass in here our button text. Or just text, was it just text? Yep, it was text. We're going to pass in here minus, going to be the left one. Then for the button class, we're going to pass in a btn and I'm going to pass in a large button. So btn dash large dash lg. And by the way, these classes are from my advanced CSS and SAS course. So if you want to check that one out, I created a complete CSS framework within there. So you're creating your own components and so forth and so on. So please check that out if you wish so. Now on click, we're going to assign this to a function. Let's just console log here minus. Okay. I'm going to copy this button. I'm going to add to this a plus and to this a plus. And that's basically it. Okay. So let's check this out. Inspect. And we should see in our console uh, because I want it automatically executing this this shouldn't happen and this should be actually in a callback function so error function and also here an error function and now we should be able to console a plus and minus okay okay now that's basically it for this part next we need to somehow increase and decrease a number here and we're going to take care of this using use state so let's do that okay now we need to import use state from react so comma and use state let's go above the return and now let's create a const and the structure here a temperature and a set temperature we're going to assign this to use state and the value the state will be zero now we have this temperature up here and we also have this temperature down here so if i transform this into, into a variable then instead of i still can see the color huh uh, <laughs> instead of temperature the text you should see here zero so let's take care of this actually I'm going to change something let's let's change the colors and we're going to change the colors right here in the classes so where we have text light and card and border radius i'm going to change this to template literals so i'm going to do this then i'm going to pack everything into curly brackets and at the end i'm going to add the temperature variable okay now if this is larger than zero then we're going to have here a bg danger and if this is not zero so it's higher than zero then we're going to have a bg info this should be a g bg info and we're missing here a question mark okay so the temperature is not above zero so the background is going to be blue a light color and we, now we need to increase the temperature to be above zero and we're going to I'm just going to close up here the the console now we can use our set temperature to increase this temperature you saw here me creating these two console logs 
we want to replace them with functions. So the first function will increase our temperature. So let's create a const. Let's assign this to increase temperature. Uh, assign it to error function. And basically this function is going to set the temperature to the temperature and we're going to increase it. And we're going to do the same thing to decrease the temperature. So I'm just, I'm just copy, paste, and going to be decrease. And this is going to be a minus because we're going to decrease with each click the temperature. So let's copy the increase function. Let's replace it in this button and let's copy the decrease function. And let's replace it in here. So let's see if we did everything right. If we did, then clicking the plus button will increase the temperature and will change the color and clicking the decrease button will decrease the temperature and also change the color. Okay, one last thing, after the temperature, you need a little sign that is the degree sign. If you can't find it, then go to Google and type in degree or degrees, degrees and sign. If you don't have it on a keyboard and just copy it and paste it right after the temperature and then you can add a Fahrenheit or a C for Celsius. And maybe I'm going to change here something up. Yay. I'm going to change here something up later on in the course, but not right now. So this is going to be an update to this course. I'm going to have here a click, then this should change this to Fahrenheit or to Celsius. Okay. So with this being done, we are kind of done with the project. I told you they are simple project, they are advanced project, the medium project. This one is a really simple one, but you can see how easily we can use state to modify something. So hope you learned a lot and catch you next time. In this project, we're going to go to the dark side and from then we're going to go to the light side because we are going to create a dark mode or a dark theme for our web pages. Basically, when we're going to push a button, the theme of the website is going to turn to dark or light, depending on which theme you choose. Now also take a look at this button. This is also going to change color. This is thanks to the context provider and also this entire thing. Let's just take a look at here. Instead of light is going to turn dark now is also thanks to the context provider and the context provider is actually a hook we're going to use use context because we already learned to use use state and use effect that's why we're now moving on to our nest to our next hook which is going to be use context so the project is pretty simple it also is meant to be extremely simple because the one thing that you need to that you need to learn here is how to use the use context Okay, hope you're excited. So let's get into the project. So let's get started by creating our project folder again. So new folder, I'm going to go in here 07 dash, uh, we're going to call this light and dark mode. So light and dark, dark mode. I'm going to copy this, copy it. And within here, we're going to create our very first file, which is going to be paste this in here. And it's going to be the first component also JSX. And you know what? I messed up here. Let me just quickly change this. So this should be light dash and so all lowercase letters, uh, dark and dash and mode. There we go. Much better. Okay. Let's RFC. Let's create a, let's create a functional component and also export it. And let's also integrate it within our app. So down here, we're going to import our light and dark mode. Okay, close it up and there we go. It should be imported up here. Always check if it is imported and then you should see it already appearing. Come on, why aren't you appearing? Light and dark mode, light and dark mode. This is determining a div because I didn't hit save. I'm always forgetting to hit save on my very first component. Okay, I'm going to start really simply. First of all, let's create a, another file here. There's going to be another component. Let's say we're going to create here a blog. Just imagine that you have a blog and you wish to import that blog within here. Okay, so JSX, RFC, and we're going to return here a block component and the block component will retain, will return a, will return a div with a class of container, container and also import the block component here. So I'm going to delete this and import the blog and close it up. Okay, so we're seeing here blog. Let's go back to our blog file. I'm also going to close up the Explorer window on the left side. So move back to the blog, blog file and add here also a padding. Now, instead of blog, we're going to import our title component. So title, and obviously it's not importing it here. So let's import it up here, title from, and two levels up, 
components and forward slash title. Now let's add this text here as blog. So instead of blog here, we're going to add it in here within quotations and we have our blog as a title up here. Also, we're going to add to this my blog width and theme and I'm going to leave this theme as it is just for now. I'm going to leave it as a string and then capital theme. Okay, let's leave it as it is. And you know what? Actually, I'm going to pass in here theme as a variable, basically as a prop. So we need to turn this into backticks, this into backticks. It's going to be much simpler if you see it this way, they will understand it on the fly. So we're going to pass this theme in here. Let's move down. Next, we're going to have a span tag, which is going to contain a button. But I need this span tag because I want to position my button on the position. You know what? Let's insert first of all the button. So within here, we're going to have a button. For this, we're going to import the button component. So but wait just a second, select both of them. Button. I'm going a bit quicker in this project, okay? Now let's import our button here, or let's use it. Button, there's the button, and I want to move it up here to the right side. So basically I need to, um, because I can pass style into this. Well, you could pass style. If I would have passed style into my button component, as a prop then I could use style as a style prop and pass every everything that I pass in here as a style will be passed and down to that button. But I'm not going to do that because I really rarely pass styles into buttons. So only in this case, I'm going to wrap the button in a span tag and I'm going to position this absolute. I'm going to position it where? Well, we're going to position it from the top 10 units and from the, wait a second, was it uh, from the right side? right side also 10 units and it should be up here okay and we can click it and nothing happens okay instead of click i want to pass to the button a text so btn i think i change this to text text and we're going to pass in here this is the sa same thing that i passed up here so i'm going to change this to a theme okay so i'm going to pass down the theme here there we go so because there is no theme then the text is still click and that's it for the button for now. And let's also add here a paragraph tag with just some lorem ipsum. Okay, that's it. Okay, now this is a component. It has a prop of theme. Now we could take this theme, go back to a light mode. And let's say that I want to pass in here a theme. And uh, let's just say I'm going to pass in here light mode. So light, just a string of light. What will happen? Well, instead of this undefined and instead of this clicks, we're going to have light. Simple, isn't it? Okay, now I don't want to. Okay, next I'm going to import use state. So use use state, and I could use here the state. Let's just just structure const, and let's destructure here theme and set theme. Okay, I'm going to set this to use state, and I'm going to use here the string of light. And basically, if I would pass down theme here, then I would still have light. If I would change this to dark, then I would have dark. So until now, nothing new under the sun. I could also pass down here a on click event to the button component and click this and create here a handler. And on the click, I would change this to dark and this to dark and light and so forth and so on. And I could also add a couple of properties to them. The only problem with this would be that it would be the same state for multiple components. If I would, if I would have multiple components, then it would be the same state. So what we're going to use do now is use use context, which is going to have in the individual context for individual components. So next up, let's use use context. Now, before we get started with use context, just imagine context in the following way. Context is designed to share data that can be considered kind of global data. Okay, it can be shared everywhere. A tree of React components, such as the current uh, blog, where we need to add a different themes for different colors. In our case, we were just going to use light and dark, but you can add later on also multiple themes. Here is where the global state is necessary. So this is why use context is so important. So let me show you, first of all, where you should create your context. So the context is basically the data that you're going to use. I would always suggest to create, I have components open. I would always suggest to create a new folder and name it context and you will also see this is going to be recognized here you're going to see a little tree here now within here we're going to create a new file we're going to call it theme and dash context 
.jsx. Now, I'd always suggest to name them with context the files, but the naming convention is basically up to you. This, I find a pretty good naming convention. If you want to do something else, then please feel free to do so. But the structure, I would strongly suggest to use it this way. So create a context folder because you could have here multiple contexts. You could have here, you'll see later on, we're going to create a project where we're going to have uh, users or passwords and another project where we're going to have different kind of currencies. And you can create a currency context, you can create a user context, a password context, and so forth and so on. So within here, the first thing that we need is not import React that, and we're not going to use RFC or something like that, but we're going to import the create context provider from react now in a previous version or when you if you would use classes then you would need to create context from react and basically it's a different process but we are now in react 18 and we are using functional components so this is the way we're going to use this okay now next up i'm going to create a and also export a const called themes and one day I will be able to type themes correctly. Now I'm going to assign this to an object. So basically I'm going to export an object and this object we're going to have a dark key with the value dark as a string and then a light key with the value, you guessed it, light as a string. Next I'm going to take these themes, actually not these themes, but next I'm going to export a context. So the way you're going to create context is by exporting another const, giving it the name, this is going to be themes, just theme, context, and you're going to assign it to create context and open and close parentheses because this is a function. I'm going to export just a empty object. Okay. And that's basically it. You not necessarily would need this, but in our case, we are going to use the context from within here. So we are creating these two within our context. Create a variable, assign it to the context to create context. And now we can go back. You can actually close this up. You're not going to need it anymore. You're going to move to your light. You're going to move to your light and dark mode. And instead of these two divs, you're going to import, first of all, your context, the theme context. So import theme context from forward slash context and forward slash theme context. But as you saw, I exported it. Not as default, but just as a regular function. So here you will need to wrap it into curly brackets. Okay. Next, you're going to use this context down here instead of the div. So select both of these tags and add and replace them to it. So it's going to have an opening and a closing tag. It's not a component. Okay. It's a functional. It's, a, it's just a function. Now this context, whatever you will name it, is going to appear here. But this context has two properties. It has a provider and a consumer. Uh, the provider we do need and you're going to assign this as provider but the consumer going to come to the consumer uh, a bit later on which you're not going to need it anymore because it's now it works differently so back to the provider the provider provides the context for whatever is between these two texts so whatever is set in here it's going to provide the context too now, everything that is in here can be a context consumer okay so this means that everything that we would pass in as a value will then be consumed by the consumer. Now, I know it's a bit fuzzy, but we are going to create multiple projects with use context. So just stick with me. Okay. The only property that, or the only prop that theme context, that the context has is the value. Now this can be anything. For example, if I would delete this and pass it in here, pass in here, dark, Let's pass in here Norbert. So let's see, let's pass in here a value. Let's say I'm passing in here a string of Norbert. Save this. Now let's, so let's say I'm going to pass in here a string of Norbert. Save it and nothing happens because now we're going to go to our blog and close out the consumer. I'm going to take out this theme. You're not sending it down as a prop. I'm going to leave the theme here in here. And now I'm going to import here the use context. So because it's a hook, I could either import it here from React use context and to whatever we assign this use context to will be the context for this component so before the return i could create just a const let's say this is my context and assign it to use context and that's almost it because now we need our provider so let's import our import our themes again again this is a 
function, so themes, context, and now I'm going to add it to this use context. So basically now it's using whatever is in here and assigning it to this variable. So if I would now copy and instead of theme, you know what, I'm going to name it theme, not my context, but theme. Hit save and now you can see here Norbert and Norbert without passing down any kind of prop. Got it? So this was what use context does. It creates a global variable and you can use it anywhere as long as you using use context and you're dragging it in for whatever provider you created. Again, this could be users, this could be colors, this could be multiple things. Okay, so we got our context here, but now I'm passing in a force value. Now the value that I passed in here is basically this value. So again, I could use theme and pass it down here. So from my use state and you will see now it's dark and if I would change this to light, it's now light again. Now you would say, okay, but this is basically a prop, isn't it? Well, not quite. I can do things with it. Instead of this use state of light, I can now use my context theme, but not this, but the themes themselves. So if you go back to themes context, you see these themes. Now let's take these themes and also because we did export it here, export const, this means I could now import it here, themes, and let's pass these themes down here. Now I'm passing down a object obviously, so I need to select something from it. I'm going to select dot light again. And there we go, we have light. If I would select from this dark, then I'm going to get dark. Okay, let's move back to light, hit save, and there we go. So what if I want to change this to dark? then I would need to have a function that changes this. So I'm going to create here a function, function and change theme. In order to change the theme, we would need to set the theme. Now this, first of all, let's check in which theme we're in. So let's create here console log and we're going to log the theme. Now let's pass down this change theme as another value of, well, of this value. So I'm going to create here an object, pass on the theme and also the change, change and theme. Now this is going to give me an error because now I need to go back to my blog and instead of having this as const theme, I need to now pass in the structure a object. So theme and change theme. Now this is a handler and we can pass it to this button as a click event. So on click and if we click on this button, then it should change the theme, okay? And let's just click on inspect here, go to the console. I have a bunch of errors to refresh. Let's delete this. Now, if I click on this light button, it should, what should it do? It should console log theme. So let's try it. And there we go. I clicked multiple times on it. Okay. So we know we have access to this function. This function is working. Now all we need to do is set the theme to something else than theme light. And we have the possibility to set it to theme dark. Now I could just set theme and theme, actually themes dot dark because we're changing these themes. And if I click on this button, this will turn to dark, but I can't change it back anymore. So let's do here a condition. I'm going to comment out the console log. Let's do a condition if theme, so the state is triple equal to themes dot light, which is the default state. I did set it to themes dot light then change the theme or set the theme to dark. And if not, then set the theme to themes dot light again. Okay. So let's try this out. Click on it. Light, dark, light, dark. Okay. I'm also going to close out the console. Now we could already do something with it. We can go to back to our button or to our blog and within here to our button. And let's just say that if within here, uh, the text, there's a text. So if the theme, is equal to the string of dark, then display the string of light because we want to change it to light then. And if it's not, then leave it at dark. Okay. So basically now the theme is, we can now change it to dark. And if I click on it, it's going to change to dark and the button the text is going to change the theme because it's indicating that if I click on it, it's going to change to something light. Now let's also change the color of this. We can now use, well, let's just use it before the click. We can now use our BTN classes and we're going to assign this to, if the theme is equal to the string of dark again, then change the class or use the class here of BTN light. 
Okay, let's hit save and voila. And if we would pack this into a template literal, then I could add a another. I need to have this in a comment. I need to have this in a in curly brackets, add this as a variable. And after that, I could add a btn-sm, which will make my button small. So basically you can use here variables and then you can add a string again to it. Now we're still not done because we didn't change our theme. So let's go back to our light dark mode. Now let's use a use effect hook. So use effect. I don't need the return, so don't need to clear it. I just need to watch out for the theme. And if the theme changes, then we're going to use a switch statement. This is going to take in a theme and watch for this theme because we have two cases. If, so the very first case, the themes is dot light, then we're going to take the document. You know what? Let me create here a let document, let doc body, which is going to be document dot body. And that's basically it. Now I'm going to take this, add it down here dot style. And I should also bring in the use effect as a hook. So use effect. And there we go. Let's move this outside the use effect. So if the doc body doc class list, so if the theme class, so if the, the first case is true, theme class is light, then the doc body doc class list should remove, should add the BG light, which is our class. Did you like the theme? I'm going to copy this and also should add a text of dark. So you can always see the color changing here. Now the next case, let's add here a break indicating that's it for this case. Now let's copy this. Let's add another case. If this is dark, then this should be, the background should be dark and the text should be light. So if I would now press on this button, then it should turn dark, but I have a small problem. I didn't remove here the text dark and the background light. So first thing that we need to do is copy these two, add them down here. Instead of add, the first two will be remove. And then I'm going to copy these two, add them up here. And again, the first two will be remove. Because the first thing that we need to do is to remove those classes. So light and dark and light and dark. Okay. So that's basically it, easy as that. But using the context provider, you can see how easy it is. As I said, with context, I was able to share data throughout the components. And although I could achieve the same results simply passing props down, which would be easier since this project is pretty small, the context offers a great solution when you have multiple components relying on the same data. And if this data changes, such changes must be communicated to all components at once. So that's pretty much it for the project. In this project, we're going to create a lock screen. And if we wish, we can also unlock the screen basically by sliding this to the right side. This will unlock the screen. Also, if you want to lock the screen, then we just need to click on this little lock here and you can see title changes, background changes, the icon down here changes. This actually component is going to be a input tag. We're going to use use hook. We're going to use react hooks like use effect, use state, and we're also going to use uh, React icons. So let's get started with the project. Okay, so before we get started with the project, please check if you have React icons installed. So go to package.json and you should see here React icons. If you don't have it, then open up another terminal and just npm i and React dash icons, and this should install icons. Also hit enter. I'm not going to hit enter. I already have them installed as you just saw in our package.json. So let's close our package, just package, just so let's close up package.json and let's go to our project folder. Then here, let's create a new folder. This be the project number eight and let's call it slide to unlock. Okay. Let's copy the title very quickly and let's open the folder, create a new file within here, paste this in and change it to capital letters, slide to and ooh, unlock and dot jsx dot jsx there we go rfc create our very first component also go to our app import the component here slide to unlock close it up check if it was imported up here and save save and you should see slide to unlock perfect next up let's create our very first component which will be the slide let me just show you here 
it could be this down here. This is the slider. So let's go in here, new file, and we're going to create a lock and slider.jsx. Okay, RFC, React Functional Component. And we also need to create here a new file, which is going to be called the same file, the same name as the other one. So lock slider, but dot CSS. Now there's a small problem. I cannot use, we cannot use WebKits in style inside of React. So we need to create a, well, a small CSS file where we'll style our slider. So let's create a slider class. I'm going to add here a WebKit, a kit, and it's going to be slider and thumb. Okay. And you need to copy this because you also need to add a active state to it. So active when basically when you hold down the button. Okay. Now the active slider will have an appearance of none, a width of, you know what, let me first, I'm just going to comment this out and let me first go in here and actually create the slider and then add the CSS. So you can already import the CSS. So forward slash and lock slider. No, not you. Lock slider dot CSS. And also you need to import the lock slider into your slider to unlock <laughs> component. So import lock slider. I'm going to import it here and let's add here lock slider. Hey, and let's also use it. So go down here and lock slider. Okay. Close it up. And there's a component lock slider. Perfect. Now the lock slider will just return a input tag so we can, you know what, I'm going to delete here everything. So input tag, input, and we're going to have the here a range input tag. Then as I said, it's going to have the class name of slider. And let's just check if this is working. Let's add here rock slider and background. Let's add here RGBA of 188 for the reds, 190 for the greens and 188 for the blues and 0.5 hit save and you should see here a slider wait just a second i missed uh, missing here an n okay there we go so there's a slider as you can see the background is gray so let's go back to our slider also i want to add here a style and i'm not going to type in here the style i'm actually going to type it up here let me create a let style a uh, slider style let's call this slider and style. So we're creating a variable and we're passing in here the styles and then we're going to pass this down here and the styles, whatever we pass in here, will then will then take effect over here. So appearance, uh, appearance. Now everything that is a string, we need to pass it. So basically we're creating here a object and this means keys and values. So everything that's a value, you need to pass it in as a string. So appearance none, we're going to make that disappear. Then we're going to add here a width and let's say we're going to have 300 pixels as a width. Let's also add to it a height of 50 pixels. Again, there should be in a string. So 50 pixels. You know what? Let's add the background color because we can't see anything. And I'm going to copy the color from here. I'm going to pass it in here and you should be in a string. I know a string and you should add end in a comma. Okay, so there's a slider, there's the background. Okay, let's take out the outlines, outline, string of none. And the last thing I want to add is a border radius and a margin to the bottom, so border. Uh, you know what, I actually have this in as a class, so I can pass it here, M, B, two, and then border, I believe it was dash five, and this should, yep, it's giving me five border. So these are already predefined CSS classes, so you should have them in here. But right this here is only taking effect if we pass it through our style. Also, if this happens to you, so you can see this is cut off, you just need to go here, settings, control panel, and toggle word wrap, and you should toggle it on. What is just, what is going on? There we go, word wrap on. Okay, now a couple of things. I also want to have to, to this input tag, a on change event. So on actually a on input, a on input, because when we're changing the slider, we're inputting value. So on input, and we're going to handle this input, handle input. I'm going to pass it the handle input as a prop up here. So handle input, pass it in as a prop. 
and whatever I will pass in here as a handle input is going to take effect here. Now the slide is also going to have a value. So depending on where this is, I want to be able to grab onto this value. So let's grab onto the value. I'm going to assign this to another prop, which is going to be slider and the value. Okay, let's pass this in slider value. And the last thing I want to pass in here is actually a width. So width, and we're going to take this width and pass it as a width in here. And you can actually add here also variables. So let's say if there is no width, then give me a width of 300. But if there is a width, then it's going to be that width. Okay, pretty simple. Okay, so that's it for a slider component. Let's also uh, change the style of uh, of this thumbnail here. And for the, for, for the active state, Okay, so we can comment this back in and just, just see what's going to happen. So if you comment this back in, see appearance, appearance none, then we're going to give this a width of 50 pixels, which is slider, and I'm missing here the dash. Ooh, terribly sorry. Terribly sorry about that. Okay, so now it's gone. Uh, let me comment this back in because I do want to see it when I'm styling it. So width and also height is also going to be 50 pixels. Then a border radius, border radius of 50%. And we're going to give it a background of hash AAA. And you're going to see it just in a couple of seconds why I'm giving it this background and not this. Because now if I do a appearance none, then you're going to get this. Okay, so we're going to have this use slider. And obviously, when I'm going over it, I want the cursor to be pointer. Okay, so now we can check this slider. Boom. Now, when it's in an active state, and we're going to change the class. So let's change, not the class, but the background color. Let's go with background, and we're going to have hash FFF. So when I'm clicking on it, holding down, sliding, then uh, it should change the background color. And we're also going to have a couple of icons. So should I do it? Yeah, because we have access to CSS, I'm going to do it right in here. So unlock an icon, and just going to copy in the Don't need to learn CSS right here. This was the important part. So the unlock icon, which you will see just in a couple of minutes, and also the also when we're hovering over the unlock icon, then we're going to have the same color as we have here. Okay, CSS is closed. Uh, let's just check. We also don't need you anymore. We can close you up and let's go back to our slider. Now in our screen here, we need to take care of a couple of things. First, let's, let's just add to this a container class. So class name container. Also text dash center. We're going to display everything as flex. That's going to be in this container and the flex direction will be column. Now, the first thing that we have in here is a lock slider and we can't change its width by just simply typing in width. And if you would pass in here 250 pixels, for example, then you would change the width of the slider. Now, I just wanted to show you that you can pass in here props and catch them also in the style variable, because later on when we're going to move to style components, this is going to be extremely helpful. Now, I'm still going to leave this open. We will really need it just in a couple of seconds. Okay, next I'm going to style the, the image. Next, we're going to style this right here. So the lock screen. And for this, we are going to go into our main div and let's use our style tag again, our style property. And let's add a height here. And I want to limit this to only 70% or well not 70%, but 70 viewport heights. Let's add the margin from the top of 15 viewport heights. Let's add a width of 340, basically to the entire container. Let's add a border of, uh, this should be in a string of four pixels solid and hash zero zero zero. Again, I could do this using CSS and just add a class to it, but I do want you to learn how you can add in here styles. But I do uh, would recommend using here CSS. So just add a class to this in this specific case only. Uh, now let's also add the border radius. You know what? I could in this case I could add here a border order of five again. Uh, let's set 15 let's see how 15 looks or 25 I don't have 25 not 20 that's also okay that works for me 
Okay, and underneath of this, and before the lock screen, we're going to add a title. So something that's to signify that, it, that here is happening something. So I can use a title component, but in our case, I'm just going to use a, a, H, a H1, but I'm still going to use a class of title on it. So title, and let's just pass in here title. Okay, next let's add down here a icon which will signify that it's unlocked or locked. So I'm going to let's go down here, let's say AI fill unlock and close it up. Let's see, did it automatically import? No. Okay, we need to go up here and let's just import AI fill unlock from react icons and forward slash AI. Okay, and there's the little lock sign. Now I do remember that we can add classes to them and we also style this class. So if I would type in here on lock icon, then it should be already styled. Okay, and if I hover over it, it should, well, it's going to turn white because the, the entire screen is white. Now, but I don't want this icon to be shown when I also have this slider up here because one is unlocking the screen and the other one is locking the screen. So we're going to add here a condition. This condition needs a use state. So let's import use state and let's add down here, uh, now up here. Let's create a const and let's destructure here the state. So we're basically going to have a show lock slider and set show lock lock slider. And we're going to use state and we're going to set this to zero. Okay, now let's take a show lock slider, pass it in here. And let's just ask the question, if the lock slider exists, then show lock slider. If not, then show the lock icon and the lock slider is gone. And this means that our screen is unlocked and we could lock it. Oh, sorry, this should be set to true. What am I doing? So true. And yeah, so we need to unlock the screen. And after the screen is unlocked, because we're starting with the lock screen, obviously, then we can on then we can lock it afterwards. Okay, so next up, let's also add a couple of UI components to this using use state. So let's do that. In order to add UI components, I'm going to do something that I, I believe you didn't see until up until now. I'm going to create a use state, but I'm going to call this UI props, UI props, when I'm doing props, and set UI props. Okay, we're going to assign this to use state. And now I'm going to pass in, wait a second, props. And now I'm going to pass in here a object. I'm going to add key value pairs, UI text. And for example, this is going to have the value of unlock screen. And now I can select this UI prop and use it in my title down here as a text. So instead of having this title, I'm going to type in here UI props and UI text. Okay, so instead of the text, I'm going to have this text. Okay, meaning that if I want to unlock the screen, I need to slide the slider. Also, let's add another property, a UI color. I'm going to set the color to hash EEE. -E -E. And I'm also going to use a UI BG as a background. And we're going to set this to a template literal using backsticks. And let's just call upon a URL. And this URL we will need to import because the URL will be an image. And you know that images can only be imported using variables. So if I would import here an image, we also need to create an image folder, folder uh, MG. I'm going to pass in here two images. Now they are in your download file, so please download them. Okay, we're going to have home image and a moon image. So let's go back to the slider and let's import lock screen img. I'm going to import it from comma forward slash images and this is going to be moon m o n and dot jpeg and the next one is going to be home lock screen home and it's going to be home JPEG. Now the lock screen that we're going to use here is basically using a variable and passing in here the lock screen. Now where should the lock screen be? 
the lock screen should be in here in this style. So let's go after border. Let's say background. I'm going to pass in the background as UI props and UI BG. Okay. And we should see, why can I see the, we should already see the background here changing. See the refresh? No. Oh yeah. <laughs> because it's UI BG. Okay. And there's a screen. It's completely black because it's too large. The image is too large. So we need to add here no repeat. Uh, actually, you know what? I'm going to add uh, center for slash cover. First of all. Okay. There's an image. You could also add a no repeat if you don't wish to no dash repeat if you don't wish to image the image to repeat itself. Okay, now we can see that color is right, so we can use a UI color and we're going to go down into the text and uh, style ba 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 bum h1 style and going to pass in the UI color from UI props obviously dot UI color which is going to be the color or there we go. Okay, lock screen, white color. Here's our slider. There's the background. What else do we need? We also need a shadow to our container column border shadow.sm. And that's more like it. It's a slight difference, but it's a meaningful difference. Let me also close up the explorer tag, just taking up real estate. And you could also go here. And you could go here so people can see more. Okay, so our lock screen is done. Next, we need to lock and unlock our screen somehow. So we need use state and use effect for this. Okay, so let's lock the screen for now. For this, I'm going to create another const. We're going to use another state. So const and this structure here, lock slider and value and set lock slider value. We're going to set this to use state and this is going to be zero. We will also need a handler. So let's create another function const handle lock slider input. We're going to set this to an enormous error function, but this is going to take in the event because we want to set the not the lock slider, set the set the lock slider to the e dot target dot value. Okay, so where are we going to use this handle lock slider input? Where well in the input. So we're going to go down here where our lock slider is. And if you can remember, we created, if you take a look in our lock slider, we had here a handle input. Okay, so we're going to access this handle input. Also, if you hover over one of your components, you will see all of its property, all of its props. So handle input, slide value, and width. Okay, so we can pass in here, handle input, and you're going to assign this to handle lock slider input. And you also had the value. You can assign this to the state of lock slider value. Okay, so let's pass this in here. And now it's looking for the value. So when I'm passing this, when I'm changing this, let me also console log the value so you can see this better. So console log this value right here. And let's inspect our project. And if you take a look in our console, and also let's delete all of this. If you take a look on your console and start sliding around, you will see the value. You can see 100 when you're on the right side and can see zero when you're on the left side. And I did do here, I do have here a mistake. The lock slider should have not the border five, but it should have border and radius of 25 pixels. Okay, there we go. So it's the same width as you can see now, it's the same radius. Now, what we can do with this value is grab onto the value as you saw in here, we grab onto the value, we see what the value is using the lock slider. Why isn't this disappearing? Amazing. So we have the value, we're setting it to this lock slider. Now let's create another function called const. In order to lock the screen, we set we need to set the show lock slider to false. So I could also do it in here, set show lock slider and false. But all that this will do is as soon as I do this, as soon as I touch it, it's going to uh, make the, the lock appear. So basically we just lock the screen. Okay. So next we need to use something that is going to track the value of it. And when it reaches 100%, then it's going to lock the screen. So that's what we are going to do next. 
Next we have a fun little project. We're just going to slide here to grow. So if just take a look at this little red zero in the center of the page, if we're increasing this, then there's a bubble that's going to grow, change color, change the color of the text after a certain point and so forth and so on until we reach 100%. Now, although this is a extremely simple project, there are a couple of important things that you will learn here, and that is passing down props. So we're going to use use state. We're going to style here a slider component and this little fellow right here, and also going to pass down a couple of props. So let's get started with the project. Okay, let's go into our project folder. Let's create a new folder 09, and it's going to be slider or custom slider slider. Let's just leave it as slider. Okay, I don't even need to copy it. So slider, I'm going to close this up, this up. Let's create a file. Let's call this slider app, slider app dot JSX. That's RFC. Ooh, ah, RFC. We're going to save this. Let's import it in our app. Go down here, slider app. Let's close it up. It's already imported up there. Now, if your background remains gray, remember you need to do a refresh in order to get rid of the stored in CSS. Okay, we can move on. We have your slider app. Next, we need a slider component. So let's go in here, slider comp and JSX and RFC slider component. Let's save it and also import it here. So import slider component from components. And now we can use it in here as slider and comp and close it up. Okay, so we have our slider component. Now, first things first, we're going to take care of the slider component. Within the slider component, most of what the slider component is going to do is basically help us style the slider and also create this little bubble right here. Okay, now the slider component will live in a container. So let's change the class name here to container flex uh, display flex and flex column, not flex everything into a column direction. And because we're going to have two independent items within here, so we're going to have, let's go down here, a input tag with a type of range again, just as we did in a previous project. So range, this is also going to have a min, which is going to be zero and also a, well, what am I doing here? Close it up and a max, which is going to be 100. Also, you could type in here 100, it's the same thing. Now, the next element that we're going to need is just a div. So let's go outside our input tag right after this, we're going to have a div and this div is going to have a span and this span is going to have a circle. Okay, so here's our range, here's our circle. Why range, not ranger, range, ranger, again, ranger, range, ranger. Okay, <laughs> so we got our range here. Let's set the value here to zero. Let's pass you zero, the range is going to be at zero. We also cannot change its value because we set it to something. So that is why we're going to use state in a, just a couple of minutes. Okay, between these two, I want to have a gap. So let's go up here in the main component style and we're going to pass in a gap of let's say 100 units. Let's go back to the slider and within here, you know what, I'm going to import a title components. So import from components or title from up one level and components forward slash title. And let's pass it in here. So title, and this is perfect exercise for you to learn using components. You learn to use props. This is why it created all of these little projects. It's excellent for, for training your React muscles. Okay, so the title had, remember, if you hover over it, you will see the props. So it has a class and text. So we're going to use text and we're going to pass in here, slide to grow. Okay, also let's do here class name of text and center. You know what? I could change this. Don't need you right here. I actually need you in here. Okay. So we got a slider. We got a circle, which is basically just a div and a text. Now let's add a bit of style to, to the circle. So we're going to take this div and add some style to it. Let's add a color and the color will be, I just say we're going to start with black. You know, to see something, let's also add a height and a width. Say height of, let's say, you could also add here temporary literals. Let's say three pixels, or let's say 30. 
30 pixels height. I'm going to copy this and change this to width. And let's now add a back no up here. So I'm going to add a color and a background. And the background will be pa 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 pa. Let's do a light gray. Light and gray. It doesn't actually matter for now. Okay, so there's a light gray color. Let's also increase the font size of whatever text is in here. So font, uh, you know what? No, let's increase the font weight. Font weight, go to 600. Let's um, let's center it and we can center it by displaying it as flex. So display and flex. And now we can use justify, whoa, missing here the comma, justify content. I'm going to justify the content center. I'm going to use the same thing for align items. So replace this with align items. Okay, and this should be perfectly centered now. Now, if you want this to be a circle, all you need to do is change the border radius to 50% uh, and add it into a string. Okay, so that's it for now for styling. Next, we need to be able to change the value of this slider. This should influence the circle that we have down here. It should influence its size, its text color, and its background color. So next up, we're going to take care of this. Okay, so let's start manipulating this. Now let's go back to our slider app. I can actually close up the Explorer, go to see more. And now we need use state. So let's import use state up here. Uh, you know what? You do know that you can remove this import React because as I said, you don't need to do this anymore after React uh, 18. And you can just import here, use state. And this will basically do the same thing. Okay, now let's use use state. Let's destructure here in a const a slide value and set slide value. I'm going to use state and set this, set the state to zero. Now let's pass in the slide, wait just a second, slide, slide value and pass it into the slide component as a prop. So we're going to pass down here a set value, set value. I'm going to pass in here the slide value. Let's grab onto this in the component uh, here. Pass it down as a prop, so set value, and we're going to pass it to the value here. Okay, so set value, slide value. If I would increase this to, let's say, uh, 20, then it should go to 20, okay? So now I can manipulate the slider using use state. So I'm going to set this back to zero. Okay, next I want to be able to change the input. And for this, we're going to need a handle input as another prop, and it's going to handle, what am I doing? Handle the slider value change. So let's create a function up here. Const handle slider value change, set it to an anonymous function, pass in the event, because we need to grab onto the event, and the event will then set the slider value to the event dot target dot value. Okay. So if I start sliding this, oh yeah, and we need to pass now down the handler. So the handle input as a prop in here grab it on, then go to our input and on input, we're going to handle the input. Okay, and now it should, you should be able to slide the slider. Okay, so now we can slide the slider, we can change its value by sliding it. This means then by sliding the value, we could actually manipulate a couple of things. Let's go back to our slider app. And right after our slider value, let's create two variables. Let's create a let bg color, just going to initiate them here and let text color. Now you can either create switch statement, you can create if statements, you can also pass it into a use effect. But I think that by creating if statements, it's much clearer for especially for the beginners. So let's say that if the slider value is less than 25, then we're going to change the background color to a color of red, the text color, we're going to change to also red, and now let's take into consideration another case. If the slider value is under 25, but it is also a, under 50, then let's change the background color to blue and the text color we are not going to touch at all. Okay, and only with these two informations, we could already do something. And that is to pass down this information to the slider component. And we're going to pass in here a BG color, which is going to be the bg color and we're also going to pass pass down here a text color which is going to be equal or is going to take into consideration the text color now let's grab onto these two props in our slider component 
So within here, the structuring, PG color and text color. So where should they take effect? Well, down here in our component, in our circle. Now we see we have here a black color for the text, but I could actually type in here that if there is no text color, then yes, the color should be black. But if there is a text color, then the text color should be set to whatever the text color is. And we know that the text color will now change depending on the value of the slider. So you can see if I'm going down here, there's going to change red. We can do the same thing also for the background color. Again, I'm going to ask it if, if there is a background color or the, if there's no background color, then leave the background color as light gray. But if there is a background color, then please set it to that background color. Again, this background color is influenced by the value. Now, at the above value, we don't have any values. So let's go after 50 and add a couple of different values. So we can add here after 50. Let me just take this one. So if the slider is above 51, but it is slider value under 75 or equal to 75. Then let's change the background color to green and let's change the text to white. Okay, so you can always see it takes effect. Now let's add two more possibilities. Let's say the background color is above uh, 75. And let's change this to orange. Let's leave the color at white. And the last possibility is that it is exactly 100. Then we're going to change only the background color to red. I'm going to remove this because it is above 75. So it can only be white text. So let's go to 100 and you can see this changes. Okay, now let's change the dimension of this circle. So with this, for this, we're going to go back to the slider component. And instead of circle, we're going to pass in here the set value property. Okay, so now you can see we are also getting our data, so our information at what, of, at what value the circle is. Now in order to increase the circle, we have here height and width. So you can see I added intentionally added here backticks because I'm going to use this as actually I'm going to delete this 30. I'm going to wrap it into, you know what, I'm going to select both of them. So click once here, hold down option, click once here, select both of them, wrap them into curly brackets, then add a dollar sign at the front of them, go back in, type in set value and multiply it times three. Okay. So basically we're going to when we're increasing or decreasing the value, the width and height will increase the set value times a number and is going to result in pixels right here. Okay. Okay. The last thing I want to do is style the input to the slider here. And this is pretty simple. We're just going to go up here and where do I have it? Uh, da, 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 da. I'm going to add here to the input. I'm going to add a style property and I could type in here the style, but I'm going to slider style and I'm going to style it up here before the return. So const slider style and let's add a object to it. And again, this is pretty simple. I'm just going to set appearance to the string of none. I'm going to add here width of 100% of its container. So the height of 25 comma and comma, of course, let's add a background. I'm going to use the same background as I did here. So background, pass in the background color, there's a slider. There we go. So the background color would also depend, could depend on this. I don't know if you like it or not. Uh, I'd rather really not use this. Now, you know what? I'm going to comment this out. If you wish to use it, you can use it, but I'm just going to use the regular background of, let's just say light gray. Okay, cursor pointer as always. There's a pointer. Let's also add a bit of an opacity to the whole thing. Opacity of just, let's say 0 0.7, that's enough. Uh, yeah, that's it. That's it for a slider. So you can slide it and you will increase and decrease the size and you will also get the value here. Okay, so hope you understand how useful uh, props are and you can also use them in styles, really important. You can also use them for calculations. So hope you enjoyed the project. In this project, we're going to create a hidden search bar, which will be activated by this little loop icon right here. So if I click on it, then the search bar will appear and also the screen will darken. Now, as you can see, it is automatically focusing on the input of the search bar 
And in this project, we're going to use React icons. We're also going to use React hooks like use effect, use state, and we're going to use for the very first time use ref, which is going to help us to refer to specific portions of the code. Now, this little project will be extremely useful in later projects. So please pay attention to how use ref works. Okay, so hope you're excited for the project. If you also click somewhere else, then we're going to defocus and this is going to disappear and you can also type something in there. Okay, so hope you're excited for the project and let's get started. Okay, so let's get started by creating our project folder again. So let's go to projects and this will be the 10th project. Woohoo! So let's name this hidden dash search and dash bar. Okay, let me also copy this and let's go in here. Let's get a file of let's paste it in. And I'm going to use here capital letter hidden search and bar and app and dot JSX. Okay, RFC for React Functional Component. And I missed up, so I hit uh, two Ds. Sorry about that. Let me just quickly fix this and also user. Now, I'm not going to create a different component for this. And please also verify that you do have in your package.json again React icons installed. If not, then please install them using npm install and React dash icons exactly as it stands here. So if you have them installed, let's hit a save here. Let's also go to our project folder and let's also include it in our application. Let's go down here and include our search, actually hidden, hidden search bar app, close it up and we should see it up here. Okay, perfect. Now I'm also going to close up the, the Explorer because we're not going to need it. We're not going to create separate components. This would be a very good example for a style component, but still I don't want to Maybe I'll add a style component to this later on. That's by, hmm. you know what? I'm going to revisit this and add a style component later on to this. Okay, let's go up to our app. And first let's grab onto or bring in use state. Let's delete this, move down here. And let's return a container, class name, container. And within here, we're going to create the input tag. We can leave it as um, text. We can also add a placeholder to it. Placeholder, let's say search. And that's it for this part. Now down here, we're going to add a search icon. Now there are multiple search icons. I will import from React icons, the BS, basically this means that it's a bootstrap icon BS search. And this should come from the quotation marks, React icons and forward slash BS. Okay, so from the BS library. And it doesn't mean what you think it means. So let's bring in our BS search here. I should, have taken, I should have taken something else. And there we go, there's a little icon. Now I'm just going to add a bit of style to it. Um, let me just think about it. I could add it here, but you know what? Let's add it up here. So let BS search style. And I'm going to add here a color, color of FFF. I could have just typed in white. Okay, let's increase its font size. Uh, you know what, let's also add it here. So we can pass in here a style because it does have a style prop. I'm going to pass the style as this variable. We just created up here. Okay, the color is now white, we can't see it anymore. Okay, so we can see that icon again. And now let me increase its font size. I'm going to increase it to 50. If I'm hovering over it, let's add a cursor of pointer. So pointer within a string. Let's position it absolute because I want to push it up here in the upper right corner. So top, let's add 20 and also right, let's add 20. Okay, so it's up there. Now remember I'm zoomed in to 150%, this is why it's so large. Maybe you see it a bit smaller. Okay, so that's it for the styling for, for our search icon here. Sadly, I cannot add a hover effect because I would add a hover effect of if I hover over it, it should be another color or it should be a gray color or something like that just to signify that I'm hovering over it. But I am going to change it when I'm going to use style components later on. This means we are going to revisit this project. Okay, next let's style also the input tag. So I'm going to add here a style and this will be input style, input style. So let's grab onto this input style. Let's, uh, let's, let's maintain the order. So input style would be up here, paste it in. Just remember, I'm just showing you how you can do some inline styling in React. You should get used to this because sometimes you will need it or sometimes you will just 
use Tailwind CSS or sometimes you're going to use Bootstrap. But I don't want you to just rely on my styling, which we have in here. App.css, you can see there's a lot of styling happening here. We have over 1000 lines of code. But I don't want you to just rely on these styles. Just if you add some kind of <laughs> class in here, everything happens. I do want you to, to see how you can style things. You also saw in a previous project how you can pass down variables and pass down state and change different key value pairs within here. Okay, so this is important. Okay, so for the input style, let's uh, let's add a margin, margin, and within a string of 10 viewport heights, 25 viewport heights for top and bottom and left and right. Actually, this will be viewport width. And let's also add now a width of string 20, come on, 20 viewport heights. Now let's change its height. And let's add here 30 pixels. This should be enough. If you want to make it larger or smaller, it's up to you. Let's add a padding. So when we're passing in some kind of numbers here, one RAM, top and bottom, and point three RAM, left and right. Okay, let's take out its border by just typing in border and set it to none. And as always, I'm going to take out the outline. I don't want that outline to shine when I'm in outline, when I'm in the input tag. So also none. Okay, now because this is going to be white later on. So let me just show you this. If I would now grab onto the document, document dot body dot style and I will pass in here as a style a background let's say equal to the color of purple Yes, we got our background color we can see the background of the input tag is white so this is why we're going to change the background background of the input tag to transparent and also if you wish to change to choose another color then please feel free to do so and again, you see how easy it would be if I would have access to the placeholder, but within here, do not have access because I would change this color to dark, darker color or something white in order to stand out because this gray is, well, you can see it's not that pretty. Also, also I can now comment in a white loop here because now we have our background color. We are going to change this. I'm going to add something different to this. And also I'm going to let, uh, body and is equal and so far and so on. Okay, I need to have it this in a variable for later purposes, not for now. Okay, back to our input input tag. Let's add, because I took out all of the borders, let's add a border to the bottom. So we're going to type in border bottom. And now we can use the temporary rules because we need to pass in here a one pixel and solid. And let's just add in for now a dark. Yeah, that's okay. But I am going to change this with a component, so with a state, okay? So just in a couple of minutes. Okay, let's increase a bit the font size. So if I type something in there, I want to have a font size, let's just say 1.3 RAM. Again, you can play around with this if you wish so. The color of the text that we're going to type in here is going to be a hash EEE. -E -E. Well, go back. And let's also add a box shadow to our input style of a string of zero pixels, zero pixels, 55 pixels, 60 pixels, and a negative 15 pixels. And for the color, we're going to go with RGBA. And let's just pass in here, completely dark color. So zero, 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 and comma again, and point 75. Okay. Also going to add here opacity. And let's just say point 0.9. I'm going to change this a bit later on. And a trans a transition of string of all point three, point three seconds. And yeah, let's go with ease. Okay. And this transition would only take effect when the search bar will appear. The last thing that I want to style is the body tag. But for this, we need our comp we need some state because we are going to use here use effect. Okay, so next up, let's make things disappear. Let's make this search bar disappear. Okay, so let's bring in now use state. We already have it in here. And let's create here our very first state. So const, and I'm going to pass in here a UI prop. So all of the styling for the UI, as, and especially for the, the body, and also if I'm changing in here something, if I change here something in the UI, then I want this state to handle this. So also let's also pass in the function to set UI and props. And we're going to assign this to use state. 
Now I'm going to pass into our state a couple of options as uh, a object which is going to have key value pairs. First of all, background. The background should have the value of purple. So I could now check my UI props, pass it in here and say dot BG and it's going to have exactly the same effect. Now also going to use here a shadow. I'm going to leave this as an empty string. Next, I'm going to use a transition. This would be all point three seconds and ease. Then a opacity of zero of the value zero. And then a show search and icon. I'm going to set this to the Boolean of true. Okay, so this is basically the UI that we want to interchange when we're doing something. Or these are the properties from the UI. Okay, first things first, let's make this search bar disappear. So we're going to take our show search icon. I'm going to pass it in here. Let's wrap this into curly brackets. And let's say search bar. And if it's false, uh, wait a second, UI props dot. Because there's a property of this props and it should be props. So UI props. So if this does not exist, then the search bar disappears. Basically, if this exists, the other way around will be if this is set to false, then the other one shouldn't exist. Now let's use our use effect to handle some kind of automatic change when the application loads. So let's first of all bring in use effect, use effect. And let's also use use effect down here. So use effect callback function. And let's pass in here. Well, what I did up here, this lad body document, so on, so on, I'll grab on now to the body, to the variable, pass it in here. And I'm going to take out this, or actually, I'm going to set it to this, but bit way down here. And also not the background, I'm going to take this out because I just want to grab onto the body. Okay, so body dot background and purple. Okay, also if you hit refresh, this should remain purple. So when the application loads, it's going to set the body to background purple. Also, body box shadow. I'm going to use here the UI props. I'm going to set this to shadow. Now remember, our shadow is nothing. So we can set it later on. It's going to has, have a value of an empty string. Okay, let's also add the transition body and dot transition. And we're going to go to our UI props and going to use the transition effect from it. Now all of this will watch when the UI changes. So UI props is if something updates here, especially the shadow, then this should all take effect. Remember, this argument will update our use effect. Although use effect will be triggered when the application loads and will be triggered again if something here in the shadow changes. Next, let's create a function that's going to show us the search bar. So let's create here a const show search. Let's assign it to an error function and set is the set UI props. I'm going to set this to, well, we're only going to change the opacity to one and the search or the show and the show icon to false. Now this should be negated. Okay, so if I pass in here to my icon, a on click event on click, and I would pass in this function, then this will set the show search icon to false. Okay, now let's go back to our input style. And here where we have a opacity of 0 0.9, let's now pass in the UI props. I'm going to pass in the opacity props dot opacity. Okay, and this will basically set the opacity as you have it up here. And also we need to do a little bit of refresh and this will set the opacity to zero. We could also change the border color. So for example, if I would take this and pass it up here, border, bottom and color, I could set this to, let's say when I'm focusing on, 
let's say white color, so hash FFF. And I can now pass this in here. So again, UI props and dot border bottom color. Okay, now let's go down here and let's change this to if show props is true, then show this else do nothing else show nothing. So let's just refresh our component, move up. And now let's create another function that is going to handle the search focus. So if I go down here, let's create a const going to call this handle search and focus. And we want to set this to set UI props. And we're going to set our props here. So basically we're just changing here the props to shadow. And we're going to set here shadow of inset. This is going to reverse the shadow instead of being outside going to be inside. So inset zero minus 60 viewport heights. 30 viewport widths and 200 pixels in the RGBA of 0, 0, 0 and 0 0.8. Okay. And the last property that I want to change here is to change the border. So this property that we created up here, this prop, or this value actually, let's change this to a green color. So green. Now I'm going to pass this handle search focus into my input tag as the on focus event. And this will help us when we're focusing on a search bar, you can see the shadow is now reversed. Okay, now if I click outside of this search bar, then I want to search bar to disappear. So for this, we're going to create another function that is going to handle our blur effect. Okay, so let's go down here, const. And it's going to handle the search and blur. So let's pass in here the event because this is very important. We need to grab onto the event and let's set the set UI props. Again, we're going to go and change now the shadow to none. So basically we're manipulating the state using these functions and using this function, we also manipulate the UI. So the entire screen here. We're going to set the opacity to zero. Basically, we're going to make it disappear again. And the uh, back and border button, where do I have it? Border button will know what will be green, but it's going to be hash FFF. And also, we're going to set the show search icon to true again. Okay, and we need to pass this into our input. There's an input, there it is, to a on blur event. Okay, let's pass it in here. So now if I click someone else, wait, why isn't this working? Uh, exactly. So the search icon appears and the search bar disappears. Now if I click on this again, then this appears and the, the other one appears. Now something is wrong with the box shadow. So let me just take a look in here. So shadow inset, oh, because I forgot the container. So let's just go back to the container. Sorry about that, but you need to, the div right here, your application should be uh, the entire height of the viewport. So let's add here a style. We're going to set this to height and let's set this to one to 100% or 100 viewport heights. Okay. So now if I'm focusing in here, we're going to get this. Okay. Next up, let's uh, auto focus. So when I'm clicking on, on our search button here, let's auto focus on the search bar. Okay. So now when I click on the search icon, uh, our search bar is shown, but I want to be auto focused and also the screen to darken. So for this, we're going to use another hook, which is use ref. So let's call for use ref. And this is a pretty simple hook. It's basically is whatever you set it is going to reference that specific part in your code. So for example, if I would go down here, right before the return, and let's, let's say const input element, so L, and let's set this to use ref. Whoa, what just just do there? We're going to set it to use ref and going to set the value to null. Okay, now in order to use this, we're going to now go down to our input tag and add here a reference. And we're going to set this to input element. This basically means then this is now referencing to this element. Now, how can we use this? Well, we could pass this, this const, and I now need to 
move it up. So I'm going to take it out and move it up, uh, up, 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 up. Let's move it up here where we have all of our variables. So let's move it up here and I can now pass it in here when I'm using this show search. So input element and this has a property. If you add a dot, you will see you have a current and this is basically referring to the current element that is focused. And now we can use the dot focus method on it, open close parenthesis. And this just means that if I will click, because remember this show search is here on this click event, and this will also trigger this. So it's going to trigger the use ref hook. So if I will click on this, it's going to automatically focus on my input tag. Now, the last thing that I want to add here, because you see the input tag is actually there, I'm not going to use this opacity property anymore, but I'm going to add here right after our show search icon, a show search and bar. Okay, I'm going to set this to false. Now, as long as this is false, so basically we can go down to our return, wrap this input into curly brackets and say that UI props, well, it should be up here. So UI props and dot show search bar. If this is true, then you're going to show me the search bar. But if it's not true, then you will hide the search bar. So how can we change this to true? Well, when we're clicking on our icon here, so basically we can go up to our handle search bar, uh, show search, and we can pass this, but before anything changes here, we can pass it as also not only sh uh, show search icon to false, but show search bar as true, okay? So this means I can no longer click it because it is set to false. So it's gone, it's not showing. But if I click the search icon, then it should show me the search bar. Okay, so we're going to have a small problem here. And that is basically the order of execution. So this is setting what I'm clicking here is setting this to true, show the bar, but it cannot execute. So how, how can I explain this? It no longer, it has no access to input element. Okay, so the reference. So it cannot ex execute the focus. And this is where side effects again come into play. So we're going to take this. Now, first of all, we're going to do something else. We're going to take our input tag and we're going to move it down here. Basically, if, and we can remove this. This just states that if the show icon is active, then show the icon. So if this is true, show the icon. If not, then show the input tag. And we know that we could trigger our show search when we are clicking on the icon, okay? Now, when this is active, then we're going to use a side effect. And for this side effect, we're going to go up here in our use effects. We're going to say comma. And now we're going to look for the props uh, show search bar. And th if this changes, so if anything changes in this uh, show search bar, then we're going to, let's just UI props dot search uh, show search bar. And if this is true, then we're going to input focus and current or input current and focus. Okay, so let's hit save. And now let's see what happens if I click on the search icon. Voila, it automatically focuses here. And we can type something in here, defocus, this is going to make it disappear again. And if we focus again, we're going to be in here. Okay, and I did this a previous version, so just uh, you don't wonder, this uh, event was actually meant to clear the search here, but because it's changing the state, this is automatically cleared. We could use here use memo if you want to remember what uh, we typed in here, but this is outside of the focus of this project. So hope you enjoyed the project.